star sailor and poor misguided fool. With me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. K-Man, round of applause for K-Man. Yeah. Uh, but no one's uh, announced who you are. Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais. It's XFM 104.9. Saturday afternoon, if you didn't know that, <laughs> I don't know why I mentioned it, that was stupid really, you must know that by now. Well we've got some great things coming up. We have indeed. We? We've got songs and chat and things. We'll also of course be um, running through the white van man questions from the sun again, but this time Carl will be answering them, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Can we do that fairly soon? Oh, there's some good questions this week. Yeah, um, we will, but um, as I was coming in there was a, like a bunch of um, posh lads, I think university students, trying to get in, because they're doing one of those... Um, uh, scavenger hunts, but they have to get points for charity and do stuff. And one of theirs is get on a live radio show. Right. So I sort of, sort of felt sorry for them. So I've I said they come on here just for five minutes. Who are they? And um, they're just um, are they toffs? They are sort of like yeah. toffs, but they're trendy toffs. They're so obviously trendy toffs. I don't know yeah. that. Is that like li Lady Victoria? <laughs> <Is she laughs> no, I don't mean that. No, they they're both sort of like that. Um, Will of Pop Idol. Right, right, right. They're like, they're right, like right. him, sort of like trendy but posh. Okay. They seem nice enough and they're doing it, they're just for uh, a cancer charity and um, uh, they just get, they, they get, get for what is it like they got their sponsor to do various exactly. things. Exactly, I don't know quite how it works but they're going to they're come on and um, because we get, the, for coming on this live radio show, they get 17,000 points. Right, good. If I can put that in context, yep. if they were to say, did it help deliver a baby, they only get 7,250 points. Well, but it's much easier. <laughs> it is. There's, yeah. lo there's lots of women just happily dropping sprogs posh, all posh. over the place. You can't get on a live radio show exactly. these days for exactly. love no money. That's true enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um... When are they coming in? Uh, uh Carl said they're going to just... 1.30, I had a word with them. Okay, what did um, you make um, them? They are posh. Really? But, um, they said they're going to wander about and go and see if they can deliver a baby and that. And then come back here for 1.30. And, uh... I don't know if it can... Um, um, I hope they don't, like, leave a be baby sort of half out. You know, if they've, got, they've got it, you know, they're... Push, 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 sorry, we're gonna have to shoot off, we've got to yeah, go see We've got today. to play an instrument in a marching band <laughs> for 8,500 <laughs> points. Well, I did say be here definitely at 1.30 because I don't want you getting in the way of the white van questions. Oh, sure. the other thing sure. is, right, they get 7,500 uh, points for delivering a baby, but they get 9,000 points if they cut Peter Stringfellow's hair. Well, <laughs> he's, you know, he's, he's very precious about his hair. It's a more delicate operation, <laughs> isn't it? There's more that can go wrong. That's true enough. Take an unconventional animal for a walk in a park. What is an unconventional animal? I think that could be a dog that just doesn't play by the rules. Yeah, that's a dog that's into Slipknot. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that wheeze in a urinal. Yeah, he's exactly. standing up. Exactly. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward well, to yeah, that. Well, yeah, I'm sure they're lovely guys. Good luck to them. Yeah, we'll see you later. Nirvana, man who sold the world. Carl's all confused because it didn't tell you it was ended, did it? What is that then? Is that a sort of glitch in the computer? Just applause, isn't it? I Careful, they it. might start swearing, you know what they're like. Yeah. Rock, star <laughs> rock stars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Blue language. Yeah, and all their uh, habits oh. and all that. Yeah, like it says track ending now. It's Stop right talking now, about it. it's, that's in, that's, that you're giving away all the secrets of radio and that. People think it's like an old piece of vinyl that we've put on a needle, you know, like those old bits of footage of Tony Blackburn. That's what they think it's like. Yeah, they don't realise there's computers doing it all. Yeah. Rick, you're, you're showing them behind the curtain. Never do that. I won't. I Never won't. Never do that, mate. Um, in the week, uh, I called Carl up. I said, how are you, mate? You went not too bad. Uh, now as you know, his girlfriend's been away for, um, ages, hasn't she? Covering yeah. the World Cup. The, uh, African, African Nations. Nations Cup. She's a sports journalist. Well, yeah. <laughs> Alright. Okay. <laughs> I love the fact you're thinking, what does that mean? Like, well, she's not much of a journalist, Rick. To be honest. Oh. I've read some of her stuff. No, but she's not on air. She does stuff. You know. Yeah. Behind the scenes. Yeah. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. A lot of journalists do. You, 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 you want to make it clear that you're not going out with Kate Aidy. That's what you want to make clear, isn't it? Yeah. Um, now, so she, she's seen none of the, the meteoric rise of Carl as right, a broadcaster. Right, she's been away for the whole time since she's sort of become yeah. a wit. Yeah. Um, a cult figure, That's to be honest. And he hadn't, he hadn't told her this. So, uh, <laughs> apparently he went home when she was sitting there, because of it, grumpy, he went, oh, it's with, yeah. She went, should we go out then? He went, she went, I'm not sure I want to go out with an idiot. Right? Oh no! Yeah, because and she went Loch Ness monster. Why don't you just think? Of course, the Loch Ness monster lives in Loch Ness, and she was giving a bit of a hard time. She went, that's why I don't. He said, that's why I I didn't tell her. I, you know, I didn't tell her really. Same thing happened when I was at school and I had to play drums in Little Donkey. <laughs> I didn't tell my parents, right? <laughs> but my dad turned up anyway. And what happened? He um. How old were you, Carl? 
Well, it was it was the school that I used to go to. Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. So oh yeah. You went. Well, you used to go to the school you used to go to. <laughs> no, but what I mean go is, on. I didn't go to secondary, did I? So I missed a lot of that. Sure. But primary, I liked. Oh. It was okay. all colouring in and stuff. Yep. And um, <laughs> it was a Christmas play, and I managed to get a part in it. And, um, Did you audition? No. Um, got a part in it, and I should have been playing the drums to uh, the one about kings. The three, we three kings. Yeah. yeah. I was meant to, meant to be doing that, but little donkey came on, and it was one of those. What do you mean know, came on? That was like next up on on you know the 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 next song. Right, right. And it's one of them songs that you can't help sort of tapping along to. Yeah. Do you know like um like if I if I was to go um. Hmm. Yeah, you'd have to finish it with. Yeah. Do you know that they actually send that into space? Do they? And what, hoping that aliens will respond with that? Yeah, they do do that because apparently it's it it is one of the things that you can't help. <laughs> what even if you're an alien life form? Yeah. They, they know that, do they? Yeah. But anyway, what can they watch Star Trek or something? Hello. Did it? Knock knock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> who's who's like, if you say no, knock knock into yeah. space, yeah, they have to say no. Oh, oggy, oggy, oggy! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that is, that you, is great. Seriously. <laughs> oh, hold on, what's something out there? Was it a little green fellow? <laughs> that is great. Yeah, so anyway, that is little, donkey, little Donkey is like one of them tunes that you can't, and I was there and he had the drumstick and I thought, God. The drumstick! I could feel myself. And anyway, Just wanted to do it, yeah. I started going along and playing Little Donkey, which I wasn't meant to do, but it went down such a storm. <laughs> <laughs> what, were there people like parents and that dozing off, and then suddenly they heard your version of Little Donkey, and they thought, wait a minute, now it's really picking up. What do you mean I'm glad we paid a pound fifty for this. What do you mean it went down such a storm? They're going, hold on, is it, was it like when people Ringo, have in the air? It was like when Ringo joined the Beatles, now going, yeah. boo, Pete Best, but he went, yeah, they and went, they went, whoa! Oh, God! No, but the teacher just said, oh, it went down really well, you can do that again tonight. Right. When you're in it again. But anyway, so my dad was there, <laughs> and, um, And you hadn't told him about this performance, no, so he just did. turned up I off his own back. I never took the lighters home and stuff to no. you know, show my mum and dad, because it just put me off. So, um, anyway, he turned up, don't know why, he must have heard from someone else's dad. Yeah. He turned up, and, um, he, he swore about me, which... Did I, he? I, I don't... Can you, what? could you, could you use you a, a word that's... Is it allowed to be said? The word? What? Of course it is. Right. If you, if you got a kid in the car or anything, you can turn it down. Now, God. Right? Yeah. right? But he said, um, it, there was a guy stood next to him with a camera, big video camera filming it. And he said, yeah, film it, but try and avoid getting the twat in the hat in the shot. Because I had one of those porters, you know, the little round pork pie hats on. <laughs> right. This is so what's sad. <laughs> what, was this a nativity play? It was about Jesus and stuff. Yeah, well, there was a porter there helping with his bags. Of course, I forgot. I yeah. mean, Mary and well, Joseph, the they stable. got there. Yeah, yeah, because sure. it was the whole, you know, because the, the inn was full. Yes. But I think the porter doubled up with the inn and the stable. Right, that was nice. So he, yeah, he yeah. carry bags over, yeah. Yeah, no, so you, yeah, yeah. You're right, though. I don't know why I was <laughs> wearing one of them. But I was. And, um. <laughs> and your father said that. And how did you know your father said that? Did he you hear it? about it later. Oh, talking about it later. Yeah, I was talking about stuff I'd done at school, and he said, oh, God, remember that. Nah, and he. I spoke to him the other day about it. Right. And, uh, yeah. Oh, God. Have so that was, that was the end of your sort of drumming career, really? Because it could have been, yeah. I mean, you know, the audience loved it the night before. Yeah. <laughs> you could have, like, been like, who knows, a whole new world for you. Yeah. Have you done any stuff? I never drummed. I've never drummed. I wish I had. I wish but, I had. uh, that is, that is, that's uh, a movie story, but is that, and that's why you don't, and you don't tell, you still, your mum and dad don't know you on the no, radio, do they? they think, when they were down the other weekend, they had to come in here, I just said, oh, I'll just go in and press the buttons. Because they could listen on Sky Digital, couldn't they? They could do. But you wouldn't want that, would I, you? I don't want that. No. Play well, record, I don't want to talk to you again a little bit about this later. Yep. Right. Princess Superstar, Bad Baby Stick, first played on this show by Steve Merchant, by Bad Steve Merchant. That's true. By, by Steve Scratch. Merchant. That's I mean, I, I still like that, but the videos put me off it a little bit because it's just it makes it into the novelty record. It always had the potential of being. Do you I know agree. What I, mean? I agree. Although I, I was never a big fan of Baby Bad Babysitter was not uh, my my favourite from the album. Sure. Uh, sure. If people want my interest and in my views on hip hop, then they can always email in Rick. Of course. Or, or call you at home. Just give <laughs> give me a ring at home. No problem. <laughs> yeah. Um, or I just pop out and you know, hang with them. In yeah. The hood. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So, sure. Um, yeah. Now it's time for White Van Man. White Van Man. Um, yes, yes for those, that, uh, those yeah. that don't buy the sun, they think it's beneath them. 
Um, <laughs> White Van Man is a column they have, I think, every day, actually, and uh, they just get sort of some, you know, Joe Public to kind of comment sure. on the week's news. Just seems to me, uh, you know, that it might be interesting to, uh, to get Carl's views yeah. on some of the big not, events. Not not because we think that Carl hasn't got a valid sort of viewpoint. No. Because Carl sees the world differently to some people, that's all, and that's, that's what's interesting. You know, like an artist does, or a... Exactly, yeah. He's very bohemian in his outlook. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you feel that you're up to scratch on this week's news? I don't like this, but... Don't you? Don't, just relax. Why not? It's pressure. No, 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 because you just have to give us your first opinions. For, for your honest answer, that's all we've ever asked of you, Carl, and it's all you've ever given us. Your honest, your first from the heart... Go of on. ...view, yeah? All don't right. worry, just relax. Don't just chill in. Are you worried that people are listening and thinking you're an idiot? If the girlfriend's listening now, go and have a wash or something. Go and have a wash? <laughs> not very nice, is it? <laughs> <laughs> is it the opposite of Napoleon and Josephine? <laughs> yeah, go on, go on. If, if you're gonna visit me again, Josephine, for quite sake, wash. Well, I'll ease you in with something fairly easy, a, a music-based question. Um, Kylie Minogue versus Dido as Queen of the Brits. What's your view there? Um, <laughs> go and have a wash. It doesn't really matter, does it? Um, <laughs> what does it really matter? <laughs> With the Brits. I was watching it the other night, and, um, I think Kylie will be a good-looking old woman. Do you ever do oh. sort of I want to, Steve, I want to celebrate with you. Every time he opens his mouth, like, I want us to open a bottle of champagne. I know what you mean. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like we did that. Yes. No, do you, do you, do, you ever do that, though? Look at people and... Uh, another person who springs to mind, Jenny Powell. I, <laughs> I don't think she's that good-looking now. Who's Jenny Powell? Is she that girl that used to be the si the assistant on Wheel of Fortune? Yeah, on Leslie? yeah, yeah. I think she's a bit over the top for a young woman, but when she gets older, I think she'll look. Be a nice. bit of a stunner. Mm. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so for you, Kylie, you know, whereas you don't feel that about Dido, is that right? She's all right. She's normal. I prefer Kylie's sister to Kylie. Okay. Looks, you know, she, I can imagine her being a hard work to live with. And Who, Kylie? Not right. Not washing up in that. Right, right sure. Right, next okay. <laughs> And what do you make of, uh, taxes rising in the next budget to pay for NHS improvements? Well, my dad went to hospital to have an operation once. Yeah. So I feel like it's worth paying it, because I've, yeah. I've got some... Yeah, because people, people might go, have to go to hospital. Yeah. Yeah. But it makes a change when it's someone in your family, doesn't it? Yeah. Because you sort of realise... Yeah, a change is as good as a rest. And the weird thing is, if it weren't for my dad... I wouldn't be here doing this show because when he was in hospital. Well, no, I'll stop you there. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, that, that's <laughs> all you need to know. You, you wouldn't be here, true, but no, but well, no, no, because this was after I was born, so I wouldn't be here. <laughs> but but so, for his more direct involvement was what? Yeah, because when when my mum was seeing my dad in yeah. the hospital, I got a bit bored. <laughs> went for a wander, found the hospital radio station. Yeah. And got a gig. Really? So in in a, in a real sense, if it wasn't for Carl's dad, Carl wouldn't be. Here. And did your dad, like, while he was listening to you, did he, like, sort of tap the nurse and go, can you get that twat off the air? <laughs> <laughs> Who's put him in that app? Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, okay, um, what do you make of the real-life Mowgli who's surviving in a Transylvanian countryside? Apparently, I don't know much about this story. I don't know you, what... You know Mowgli, he's the guy from the Jungle Book. Yeah. The little oh. kid that grew up, um, with bears and animals and stuff. Apparently there's a real-life one in Transylvania. What, what were the things in Gremlins? <laughs> what were the what? The, in Gremlins, they were. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, this is an example. This is what your girlfriend said. Think. What were the things in Gremlins called? I can't remember. Just, I mean, it's really. Something like that, isn't it? No, no, wait, 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 wait. Just really, really think now, Carl. Just with all, with everything you've ever, with all the brain power you've ever used, think what the things in Gremlins were called. It's not there. There's a clue here. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. They're not. What? Gremlins. Yeah. Play a record, Carl. <laughs> this is XFM. Well, we're back, and there's a few more people here. It's <laughs> absolutely well done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well observed. Yeah. Do you want to say hello? Yeah, hi guys. Hi guys. <laughs> and what are you doing here? Uh, we're, this is, uh, Mark and James, or Sko and Belch, and we're here. Sorry, your names are what? <laughs> Sorry, say the last <laughs> bit again. Or what? Sko, Sko and Belch. Sko and Belch? Yeah, that's right. Do you want to explain that? Um, no. No, <laughs> from the <laughs> drinking Sorry. games, I imagine. Yeah, oh. We've got worse names than that, but it's radio, so. Sure. <laughs> now, are you, you're presumably, um, students? Uh, we, we've just, we've just, great, well, we kind of graduated, we, we've been in work for like about a year or two. And what do you do? Um, I work for a management consultancy. I work for a distribution company up in Birmingham. 
Right, well, okay. Yeah, now, you're, what you're doing is a scavenger hunt and you're raising for um, uh, a cancer um, charity. Cancer research. Right, yeah. and you've got to do. And this is. We're, we're just helping you out here because for 17,000 points, you have to get live on a TV or radio show. That's exactly it. So that's, here we are. That's why we're here. <laughs> yeah. you, have you, do you ever listen to XFM? Uh, I know of it, yeah. I, I listen to it a few times. Sure. What kind of music, what kind of sounds would you normally be into? Uh, right. I love stuff. cheesy radio, sort of school disco, sort of, you know, 80s right. stuff. Sure. Sure. Sorry, what right. was your name again? Mark, or Sco. 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 Okay. <laughs> and you're... Belch. Belch. Um, and what sort of sounds would you be uh, grooving to, Belch? Oh, uh, cheesy. UK Garage? Che well, uh, well... Craig David. A, 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 bit, a bit of house, just very occasionally, sure. a bit of cheese. It depends what kind of mood I'm in, you yeah. know? Um, yeah. now, yeah. You, s you don't listen much, but you, you... I mean, kiss a celeb, because Carl... Yeah, we actually wanted to do that with you, Ricky, is that mm, right? No. Well, that's not going to happen with Ricky, but so you know Carl's now got his name mentioned in Heat magazine. Is that right? Well, so that's you, if brilliant. If you want to snog Carl, we'd love to see that. I mean, we don't want to <laughs> snog Carl, but I mean, we were thinking if there was kind of a female presenter here, we might be able to do something, but um... What are you saying? A female, <laughs> a female placenta? Well, if you've got one. Have you seen some of the female <laughs> presenters that work on XFM? Oh, presenter! Is that why they're on radio? I thought you said placenta. Um, <laughs> that's uh, unlikely. I know, um... <laughs> Well, now what's the other things you've got to do here? So what, what are some of the things you've done already? Well, See, we, some of these worry me, like start a fire in Pudding Lane. Oh, we've for, done that already. For 4,700 points. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what we have done. We've been on, we've been on Phantom of the Opera stage already. Have you? Yeah, we, we just asked the stage door guy. Sure. And, that wasn't um, during the show, I see. No. And that's right, we also, we, he actually, he actually mentioned that, yeah, we shouldn't speak about that too. Well. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> he'll get sacked. Well. Sacked. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he was really kind to let us on. Um, we've jumped in Trafalgar Square Water with doing a sort of friends impersonation, so that was... Right. How know, many points did you get for that? We got 2,000 points for that, we got right. 8,000 points for being on the um, stage at Phantom of the Opera, yeah. and we get double that, we get like 18,000 points, which is almost the maximum for being here right now. Really? So that's yeah, absolutely well, great. I, I, was, I wouldn't worry about the little things, I'd go for the big... The yeah, big that's it, we're not, we're, 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 not, we're not interested in the little stuff, we want to go for the big stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So what are the big ones are, uh, get on stage with S Club 7, that's not going to happen, is it? What, what have you got till, till 6 today? Well, yeah. S Club 7 are on at the London Arena, uh, at about 2 o'clock, so... Good luck, okay. we, we, I, I think it's going to be very, very difficult to get on there, but... Uh, I, I think so, yeah. Get in the vaults of a bank. Yeah, you some of these, some of these are bordering on the illegal, that's 20,000 points for that. <laughs> um, like, that? like, get in a cage at London Zoo, don't do that. <laughs> I mean, just 10,000 points, but don't do it. And this is a penguin cage. <laughs> well, that's what we were hoping, just some kind of you know, timid animal we might be alright with. You know? Yeah, sure. If anyone's got any good ideas for sort of funky things to do on air, then um... Okay, well if you, if you leave, if you leave your number and anyone calls in they can help you then. Well maybe, maybe some of their clubs are listening. Or if they say, because I mean we love if, them to bits. If they are, it, it's, it's for charity and the, the points get awarded into money for colon cancer research. So, it'd be absolutely fantastic if we could. Yeah, so Bradley, John, Tina, if you're listening. Yeah, if you're listening. <laughs> Or any celebrity out there who's a female celebrity, we need to we need to snog them. It doesn't oh, need to be a long snog. Yeah, if we can, that'd be this great. Is, this is good for seven thousand points. This looks like a good one. Um, play the organ in a church. That must be easy. Is that a metaphor? Yeah, but the, you know what a church <laughs> is like. It, it says the bigger the better, so it might be. That's got to be euphemism. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be, hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, thanks very much. Good luck. Good luck, guys. Guys, yeah, thank you very much. standing outside Le Miz looking Miz. That's gonna happen. That's good. <laughs> Man, a big gun type thing on the HMS Belfast. That well, we've got the big gun, it's just finding the boat, which is the problem. Oh, so. calm down. What was your name? <laughs> Bo? Poe. No. Poe? Let's go. Po. Let's go. Thanks <laughs> very much. Thank you very much. Cheers. 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 Bye. The streets, let's push things forward on XFM 104.9, the home of charity. <laughs> That's true enough. Yeah. I, I've got to slow down because I'm a doing a little bit too much for charity. I've got to, I've got to worry about myself sooner or later. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No, come on. We were halfway through uh, White Van Man. We were indeed, those, yes. Those, um, those lads came in. Getting Carl's views on some of the big stories of the week yeah. from the news. Um, Carl, what do you make of the fact that the British Olympic curling team won a gold medal? I watched it. Uh-huh. I thought it was really good. Um, <laughs> the only thing that's getting on my nerves now it's like, what's that? Is that a trombone <laughs> player just sneaked in? <laughs> that was me moving this microphone. Right. That was so, incredible, wasn't it? Yeah. What an amazing um, noise. The only thing is... <laughs> that shouldn't sound like that, should it? That's incredible. What a shoddy tin pot station this is. Well, we know that. Sorry, Carl. Go on. It's like, in all the papers now, in, in like the, you know, the Star and the Sun all week, they've been like, traipsing models over a bit of granite. Do you know, like how those things are made out of granite, the, um, the things they throw? Oh yeah, and it just that that bit annoys me. 
Okay. The what, way that, the Daily Star? <laughs> no, the way that, you know, this sport, nobody had ever sort of heard of it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Sure. We win a gold mar medal. Yeah. And now in the papers it's like... They've gone crazy, they've gone they've curling mad. It. Yeah. It's a good game now. Yeah. Good. Okay, next. Alright, good. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Mm. Uh, what about the fact that the world's tallest man is living in a semi in Neeston? Uh, it's alright, isn't it? Um, <laughs> something that someone told me in the week is that, do you know all these tall people like this guy? Yeah. Which is a bit weird they've only just found him considering he's the tallest man. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a bit weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> someone, <laughs> oh, someone genius. told me that, um, uh, do you know the guy who was in James Bond, the big bloke? Yes. Jaws. Jaws. He's got the same illness as this bloke. Right. And what it is. It's called it's, tall. It's something about. You're suffering from tall. You've got a, a small tumour or something just behind this part of your head. Yes. So oh, yeah. Just, just sort of in, in the middle of your eyes. Yeah. And, and the pressure on that makes you grow really tall or something. Yeah. So he needs to get it sorted. <laughs> That's your advice to him. Yeah. Get it sorted. Okay, very finally, uh, Carl, this is important. This is, um, just projecting <laughs> into the future. Get it sorted. Just projecting into the future now, K-Man. <laughs> Apparently, global warming will bring sizzling summers and weird wildlife to Great Britain in the future. Are you worried about that? Um, how soon? Soon enough for you to worry. Yeah, it's pretty worrying. Okay. Um. You don't, you wouldn't prefer it to be sunny here all the time? No, because with hot weather comes weird spiders and that. See, I always think we're quite lucky here. Yeah. If you live in Australia, you might have the sun and stuff, but you've got, like, deadly snakes. Yes. Yeah. Which are death. Did you know snakes are death? Snakes are death? They don't have ears. Okay. Um, so you're all right walking about behind them. Yeah, but if they see you ahead of you, you're, you're, you're in trouble. But, yeah, with, with places like Australia, you know, people go, oh, it's great, it's sunny, but... They don't talk about the spiders and they keep the spiders lizards yeah, and stuff. Quite. So I think we've got a bit of the both the best worlds. So you're worried though about in the future the vultures flying through the sky, we've got various creepy crawly snakes. You yeah. concerned about that? Yeah, well there's a load I saw something in the news in the week that a load of sparrows or something was somewhere. Maybe that's the start of it. <laughs> that's an interesting story. <laughs> was that front page or? <laughs> <laughs> There's a load of sparrows somewhere. <laughs> Read all about it. Sparrows somewhere. Some sparrows somewhere. Sparrows somewhere. Load of sparrows somewhere. <laughs> sparrows somewhere. <laughs> there you go, anyway. Excellent. That's Thank great. Thank you very that's, much, that's, Carl. That's, uh, that's Carl um, giving his views on the news. Don't do that next week. <laughs> Why not? I just, I just don't like it. Why? Pressure. It's not pressure, you did brilliantly. Yeah. Lost Profits there on XFM 104.9. Now I like that. Mm -hmm. It rocks. I like the guitar, atmosphere, it's good. But it's called the fake sound of progress. No, I know. What? See, what always annoys me is when people, um, they dismiss, you know, say, Enrique Iglesias, current number one, a great song. Good video. Brilliant video. And they say, oh, it's rubbish and all that, but I think that songs with titles like A Fake Sound of Progress. Yeah. Much more something to get on your hobby horse about. What has happened in that Bad video? Bad lyrics by good if, artists is always worse than a If you're listening, song. or if you work for the record company, or you worked on that video, because he's got the money and the girl, and then Mickey Rourke beats him up, right, he has a fight, you just see him knock him over, and then it cuts, and the next scene, it's night, it's not in the desert. There's loads of, um, uh, police cars. They're not doing anything. They're, they're just standing and around. And somehow he's... Probably got, eating he's, donuts. He's dying of injuries. But I don't know what happened. They don't... What has happened in that video? I, I think if you heard the 12-inch mix, <laughs> there's a whole bunch of other, uh, sequences that explain why. Yeah. I mean, we all think, all we think that he stole the girl off Mickey I Rourke. I think he stole the girl off Mickey Rourke, yeah. as well as some money. Some money, Mi yeah. Mickey's tracked him down. Yeah. And he's thinking, I'm gonna stop running, I'm gonna face Mickey this time. And he yeah. does, and then, boom, you're right, it cuts, and suddenly the police have... Yeah. Have shot him or something. I don't know where they done. are. Don't know what, the, the police seem to be leaving him to die in there. See, I love. thought, I thought that they'd called the police, because the, 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 sort of like, the melee, mm. but Mickey Rourke's off. With his gang, the police are going. Well, you know, where are they? There's no evidence. They go. Well, look, he's dying. They're going. But how did he die? Yeah. How is he dying? He's, he's not. He's a bit wet for the. No, in no, in Rock though, Rick. I imagine he's uh, stitched Enrique up. I reckon he's framed him or something. Or, or he's he's no, he's no sort of like ninja stuff, and there's lots of internal injuries that yeah. aren't immediately. Anyone, if you were involved with perhaps the making of that video, or indeed you are Enrique Iglesias, give yeah. us a ring if you're around. Come on, just just fill us in. I, I need. I, um. 
I'd rather play some adverts now than I'd, love, I'd love to play some adverts for it, but I'll tell you this, I'd also like to tell the listeners that coming very soon on XFM, some huge news about Carl is. that will rock It'd the be capital. It'll be like it's gonna be an ongoing saga. Good track, good band, but I'll tell you what, in the second hour I just want to play classics. I'd love to hear a bloody I want to play right? some Cure, New Order, Smith. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Mm, mm, some, mm, you know, we mm. played Nirvana earlier, but it's not enough for me, Steve. No? You need I your fix. I want- <laughs> I do. Well, uh, it's that point in the show now, Song for the Lovers. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of my favourite singers, what, probably one of the most beautiful singer songwriters of all time. Well, you don't mean that, like, you don't mean that he's a good looking bloke and you fancy him. <laughs> I mean, I just want to clear that up, Rick, because otherwise... <laughs> that would, yeah. What you uh, mean is that the songs you write are beautiful. Yeah. You can take or leave him as a bloke, can't yeah, imagine. Yeah, of course, of course, yeah. And I've got, I've got, and, and he's, he's written, mo he's written such brilliant classics with his lovely ass as... Oh, <laughs> why did I say that? Why did I say that, for, that? Rick? Because people will that? listen and misinterpret. Oh, God. Um, uh, he wrote Galveston, he wrote Wichita Line Man, he wrote, um, yeah, he wrote MacArthur Park, and just to tickle him down below, what? what? I don't know what he's saying Thieves. <laughs> and this is, uh, a song, one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard. It's off, um, a few, a few album, Ten Easy Pieces, which is just him doing the versions, um, of other, you know, that he gave to other people on piano. And this is, um, called If These Old Walls Could Speak, and it is absolutely beautiful. Listen to this. If These Old Walls Could Speak by Jimmy Webb. Might play another track off that later, if we've got time. What, today? Yeah, well, maybe, or maybe next week. We've got, no, we've got no. lots to pack in. We've got things like New Order, Cure, oh. I'm just hoping that, um, <laughs> all those kind of new metal fans, Rick, can just calm down for a second, you know? And, yeah. And, and just enjoy that for what it was. Yeah. Well, well, they're not, know, I hope their snobbery is not gonna uh, prevent them from enjoying I it. I hope they can just leave it alone for two hours for our show. Because exactly. we try and, you know, we get, try and pack lots of well, stuff Well, whilst you're talking about new metal, can I just say, Ian Cumfield is here tonight, he's what? moving from Fridays. Right, what the hell does he think he's doing? He's yeah. just offering up information now. No, it's just like you were talking about the new metalers, and now seems like a good time to Carl, say. listen, you're here for our amusement. Yeah. You don't, you don't sort of come in any time you want. When we decide it's time to sort of have some fun at your expense, then we'll let you know, but yeah. otherwise... This is, we're not here to help other DJs, or, or, or even this station. We don't give a, f about this... See, this is what my girlfriend said. What's that? We should listen to her. She, she knows what she's talking about, just, clearly. Now put your microphone you. down. She said they just wheel you out when they need you. Switch your microphone off, Carl, and let us finish what we were saying. Right, just... What yeah. were we saying, Rick? Um, uh, Ian Canfield has got a rock show. Oh, right, yeah. Starting today. Four hours of pure rock. rock. Yeah, he's probably here smoking, drinking Jack Daniels and just like having pictures of Vance put up around him <laughs> to get in the mood. Then he'd go out and rock. <laughs> Carl, don't be silly. Turn your microphone on. We're joking. It was, uh, it was, is that right? When's he on? 8 till 12 tonight, 4 hours of rock. Lovely. Listen, um, some big classics coming up, plus oh, huge no, no, please news play about oh, no, Carl. Please, let's play some more ads. Do you really want some ads? I'm tired of the music and chat. Please play some more ads, Carl. Please. Oh, Carl. Christ's sake. <laughs> Cure on XFM 104.9. That's what it's all about, Steve. Absolutely. Classics. Yeah, we've got some more classics coming up. Looking forward to them. Now, when we were talking to Carl in the week, the thing we talking to Carl is that you come up with something that's sort of like, um, quite innocent, and he goes, ah, well, the once, right? And you realise that it's comedy dynamite. Yeah. He doesn't know it, but we want to go save it. And he let out, um, you were filling in a form, weren't you? It's, it's all like your girlfriend thinking you're a div. And it's happened before, isn't it? Because she came home and you'd filled out a form to get a job once, hadn't you? Yeah. What was that for? Granada well, Telly. And on it... Well, uh, let Carl explain. Yeah. Um, you, you, you see, this is what annoys me with job applications, because rather than just saying, do you want the job and what can you bring to this business? Yeah. Do you want the job is a good one. Because yeah. the thing is... <laughs> that, 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 that's sort of the for the boys. No, listen, right? Because if they say no, yeah, I don't think they want the job. Yeah, but listen... Go on. I mean, I presume with what you do, you, you have to take people on and stuff. Not like a fight, you mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think it's more important that you're willing to graft and put the hours in. Sure. Then say that, you know, you, you did well at school. Yes, sure. Because if I wanted to, I could have done well at school. Of course. I just, I just didn't want to. Yeah. So where's this going? So you had the application form. So when it came to the qualifications bit and that, I couldn't fill them in because I didn't have any qualifications. 
And it was also asking about your languages. And I, I put down English quite good. English quite good. Ha ha ha. And his girlfriend Brilliant. came over and seen the form that he'd sent off. This was a copy, copy of it. Yeah. And so she went, oh, you know what I mean? So that's what started, you know, the disappointment. So they're going to get that and think that you're not English. I don't think I've got it. It was ages ago. Right. <laughs> How long ago was it? Oh, well, it was when I was still in Manchester, so five years ago. I don't think you've got it, no. <laughs> um, no, the, the, yeah, no, I think you've... There yeah. could be a long list. I mean, the, the, there's probably a lot of admin problems in that organisation, but they, they've probably... But what, what I meant by it is that, me Engl you know, I can speak English, but I don't know all these long words that people use all the time. Yeah. Oh! Yeah. God, oh, can I just tell this quickly? Um, it, in the week, um, I'm talking to you now, the listener. Um, usually I don't. Yeah. Uh, Carl said, oh, I'm about embarrassing him on air and that, and he's worried about his education, and he was worried about not knowing long words, like we come up with any long words. Mm. And he said, no, I, I was, I was scared, um, you were gonna ask me something about, um, someone, and he's, uh, Eastern European leader, his surname is Milosevic, and Carl said, so I learnt it this week and learnt it so you can't catch me out in case you say, I said, what? And he said, he thought about it and he went, Flobberdam Milosevic. <laughs> Got a surname right though, didn't he? So what's his, surname, name, right? what's his name? That's how Bill and Ben would address this leader. <laughs> how would they have said it? Slobodan Milosevic. What's his name? Slobodan yeah. Milosevic. Yeah. Well done. well done. Anyway, Carl, look, you almost let it slip then as you were talking about your uh, filling out that application form. There's some big news that everyone needs to know, which we were stunned by in the week, although the more we sort of talk to you, the more it starts to fall into place. Yeah. But Carl, what's the story? That I haven't got me, uh... My exam results from the GCSEs. He never turned up to get his exam results. I was working. And so, how many did you take in the end? Because you weren't even sure about that, were you? You think you took maths and English, don't you? Yeah. And you, you think you've handed in the artwork for art, don't now, you? Now, art was, um, continual assessment, wasn't it? Yeah. Coursework. And what was the, the you had, you made? I made a man s sort of putting his arms into a car. <laughs> you made a model of a man putting his arms into a car. What was this? So that like, one's passed. Was that, is that, that this is a homage to break-ins in Manchester? <laughs> was this? <laughs> <laughs> was this? <laughs> oh look, he does what he sees. Yeah. Um, so, so you've got it? that, that's safe, you've so, definitely got that one. So you've taken mm -hmm. art, you've taken English and maths, you think. So this is what we're gonna do, listeners. We're gonna try and find out his exam results for him, and tell him next week. Like on there. We're gonna call his school, we're gonna try and track him down, and we are going to have a little envelope, and we are going to give Carl, at the age of 29, his O-level results. Uh, GCSEs. GCSEs, yeah. Now, Carl, so you took maths, yep. you think, you took English, you took, do you remember turning up to do this? Do you remember sitting in the room, filling in the forms? Yeah. Okay, and how did you feel you did? <laughs> I didn't, I don't think I did well. You don't think you did well? Did you revise? No. Why didn't you revise? Because I, I don't really believe in it. <laughs> okay. Well, it's just that if you don't know it, then you don't know it. You shouldn't have to start looking at the book. If I went to the doc- if I went to, like, the hospital- Yeah. And the doctor said, oh, you need your appendix out, but hang on a minute, I've just got to read up on it. Yeah. That isn't good enough. Okay. He should know, and that's- that's the way I feel about it. <laughs> to be it. fair, though- He did do the revision beforehand. Yeah. They don't usually pass on, uh, like, maybe, like, when they're in practice- Yeah, information they took in by osmosis. Yeah, yeah, and they- Bloke comes in and goes, can I just see what you did with that? And he goes, you've passed. Yeah. Phew. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Good job I watched Casualty. <laughs> I just like the way, you know, the things that interest me, I remember. Things okay. like snakes not having ears and stuff. Yes. I didn't have to read about that. No, you just learnt that, yeah. You saw it on the telly, didn't you? You saw yeah. it on that Ian Wright programme. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what Carl said to me, he said, uh, only, no, it's actually, um, I, I called Carl up in the week and Reese was with him, you know, Reese used to be on XFM yeah, and he yeah. took the phone and he went, Carl's worried, I've seen that programme, he said, snakes don't have ears, right? He said, so you can creep up on them and pick them up. And he said, Carl's worried, he said, how would you ever put them down again? <laughs> Because then they know that you're there. I woke up the other night, quite late. <laughs> Worried about that. And I said to my girlfriend, I said, how do you put a snake down? And she said, what are you talking about? I said, that Ian Wright thing, this guy managed to pick up a snake. And do you know that thing where they clamp its head on a jar to get the poison out? <laughs> I do now. Right? <laughs> they did that, but they didn't show you how they got rid of it, and I thought, it could really get nasty, because it's obviously annoyed that you've had its head pressed in the jar. Yeah. yeah right? They hate that. Now, when Especially you, as it's in front of their mates. When you lift it off, yeah. right, you've got hold of it. Yeah. If you go to chuck it down, <laughs> it's gonna turn on it's you. It's gonna go wild, isn't it? So, I, I just wondered. 
Well, what you do is you never put it down, Carl. Yeah, that's why, that's, that's why that bloke has got about, you know, 11 or 12 just carrying him. Exactly. Yeah, you never put it down. You sling it. Who cares? You just throw it, don't you, really far. <laughs> that's not, that I don't think you should throw snakes. But Carl, listen, okay. don't worry, you don't, we're not asking you to get involved with snakes, we're just asking you now, you did, you, you've, you've, you've done ma maths, you think? Yeah. Did no revision for that? No. Okay. Uh, English, do you remember what it was? Did they ask no. you about Shakespeare? Did they ask you Can't about books? I remember, but I must have done it because I thought that was- It was the English enough. language, not English literature, wasn't it? So it was, was like- it spelling and what- So was it, no, was it, was it like a comprehension, you read a passage and had to ask questions on it? Was it- uh, did you have I to write a short essay? I don't know, I can't remember any of that. <laughs> okay. I did a, I did a science. Okay, did physics it? or chemistry? Physics. Alright, well done. And uh, this is all you think? Any you actually took that? You actually took physics, do you say, so you think? You're obliged to do a language, I think. Did you do French? I did French for a bit. But I don't think you are. I don't think you have to do a language. I think you have a GCSE, I think you've got to. Well, it. English quite good. <laughs> I think that's his language he did. I can't, so you know about I language? Can't History? Remember. Geography? Just, just what you will find out, won't we? Okay. But you just can't remember. You, I, I, I can't believe you can't remember turning up for these things, because it's quite a big moment in people's lives. Yeah, it is that, the, it is the thing most. that you've been working to all of your educational life. On the day that the, the things came out, I was working at a print, as a printer. Okay. And it was a really busy day. A lot day. of spelling mistakes that It was a really busy day, so you're bound to forget. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but I, I, I had to use gold ink that day. Oh, <laughs> And it's, it, yeah, I mean, you're yeah, not yeah, a printer, yeah. so you don't, you don't know No, this. no, that's the biggie, innit? But it's tough, you've got to really get your rollers clean. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, I'll play a record, mate, and good luck with the exam results. Hopefully we'll have them for you by next week. <laughs> PJ Harvey on XFM 104.9, the home of the classics. Absolutely. Classics. Classics. Classics, classics, classics. Oggy, oggy, oggy. Oi, oi, oi. Um, well, we were, uh, <laughs> talking earlier about this, um, uh, as this book, they died young, right? And there's all these theories about these people, uh, like famous people that, um, uh, aren't really dead. And I remember speaking to someone about this, okay? And they said to me, Bruce Lee is not dead. <laughs> right? They said he's not dead, right? Uh, and I thought was, I said, well, um, how do you know? So he's going, no, it was a whole big thing by the Hong Kong government, and he's actually working as an undercover cop. In Hong Kong, <laughs> I, I using using his his kung fu powers. Now, no, he's apparently he faked his own death, Carl, yeah. so that he could work undercover for the Hong Kong yeah. police, infiltrating gangs, the triads, that sort of thing. Now, my point is this: if you're going to use someone undercover in Hong Kong, right? You know, an undercover cop. I suggest using the most famous Chinaman of all time. <gasps> that yeah, that would that's be a guarantee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, when he's taking away a gang, they're going. You look a bit like Bruce Lee. He's going, no, no, I don't, no. See this, this moustache? Who's a bit wonky? Well, this, I just, just take my word for it, I'm not Bruce Lee, alright? Well, all that stuff he did when you were punching us and kicking us and chop, yes. But, Cohen, I'm not. Yeah, it does look a bit like the stuff in my film, in, in his films. In his films, yeah. But it's, it's not. It does it's not. just coincidence. No, yeah. The thing, thing is, though, and not sounding bad here, not trying to offend anyone, but they do all look the right! same. They okay. do all look- No, no, no! No, I've not, no, you, you know, we're having a serious chat, I'm, right. I'm not, you know, I'm not here to upset anyone. Why? Right. And what I'm saying is, over here- I'm so sorry. No, I'm not, yeah, but you know me, I'm not, I'm not out to upset right. anyone. Right. You're not a racialist? No. What so, do you mean? You, you, are you saying Orient saying people is, all look alike? Well, look, look at the people over here, right? Yeah. With like, you've got- No. You've got ginger this... people. <sighs> You've got people with black hair, you've got people who are fat, mm. people who are thin, mm. but they're all so sort of fit, which isn't a bad thing. They all do that sort of thing in the park. They're all fit. It's a place where black hair, I mean, when they come here, they take pi pictures of people with ginger hair, don't they? Because they don't get them over there. That's what I'm saying. So calm down. <laughs> so you're saying that Bruce Lee, the most famous Chinese movie star of all they time. They can't tell him apart. <laughs> other <laughs> other trial members wouldn't. How are they? <laughs> I mean, how are they going about the business at all? I yeah. mean, what I'm saying is, how, how would they even how, realize? Yeah, that, that was the, the guy. What do they have to do? Wear numbers in you know because there's 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 a billion. No, but of when, them. You, when you know them, then you know. So what? Oh, I see. They can tell each other apart, can they? Well, they got signals. <laughs> I, this is amazing, isn't it? That's how you get away with Simon, it. Simon, Simon, which one are you? Just raise your hand, Simon. <laughs> yep. Chang, which one's Chang? Chang, good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it must be murder, mustn't it? Just that can be the only people thing. going into the wrong houses. 
all the time, <laughs> getting off with their mates' wives. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It must be a nightmare. Actually. It must be a nightmare. Um, this, uh, Carl, he, please don't complain. He doesn't know what he's doing. So I'm really sorry to anyone. Uh, he honestly does not know what he's saying. <laughs> XFM 104.9. Yeah, but what I'm saying is... Go on. I don't think I am offending anyone. <laughs> okay. Fine, that's alright then. And you know that I won't want to do that. No, I know you don't. Oh, I know. I swore oh, I know. Radio, I said, right, if you've got kids in the car, turn your radio. <laughs> so before you make any potentially racist remarks, just point out if you are listening and you might be oriental. Yeah. Please don't take offence. Or go, oh, oh. You know what I mean. So yeah. Go on then, so what, what was this other dead person? Who's <laughs> not? Carl, play a record. Ricky's having a heart attack. <laughs> we'll come back. XFM. Well, the music of tomorrow is here. <laughs> That's true enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. XFM. Must be some sort of muck up with the post. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rick, a lot of the times when I've played uh, Hip Hop Hooray, my uh, hip hop track of the week, yeah. you've sort of scoffed, you've thought that maybe I don't have credibility amongst the hip hop fraternity. No, it's just the way you dance. Well. It's merely the way you dance that, that worries me. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. people can't see it, really. And it's sort of like. Imagine if Mr. Bean. Thought he was in D12. You know what I mean? It's it's that sort of. And I don't diss you. I mean, I, I know you're 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 a hip hop appreciator. You know. I wouldn't expect man. you to diss me. <laughs> I'm a black queen. <laughs> um, but uh, the point is that I just uh, there's a little something that Carl's got on tape for you that I think might change your opinion of my uh, whole hip hop credibility. Oh no. Um, now I told you in the past. Not you know, video I, tape, is it? Not at all. Not at all. Actually, oh. Carl, just play it. Just play. It. Yo, one, two, one, two, we are the Dilated People. Oh, Chilling oh, on oh, Hip Hop Parade. That's right. With Steve Merchant, y'all, XFM 104.9. LA to London, Dilated People expanding them. All day. Now, you got that, how about you that? that? Come. No, it was just when I was hanging out with my homies. No, you did it. Do, you, do, do, do they come in in the week? They were in the week, I think, and somebody got them to do it for them. You know, no, that was when I was just I was just hanging in the crib with them. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. That's very, that's very them, nice. Uh, nice and, the, and the guys just, put, just laid down some beats for me. Yeah. You know, I just laid down some vocals and, uh, and I gave him match respect for it. You know, and the place was mad deep with girls at the time. I assume you're going to play Dilated Peoples this week then. Well, maybe. Yeah. Let's play it, Carl. That's very good. Merchant, y'all, XFM 104.9. LA to London, Dilated People expanded. Respect, guys. Cheers very much. Out of here. Yeah, yeah, guys, just maxing there. Lovely. Good to hear from them. Good to hear from the boys. <laughs> well, probably, I'll probably be heading over to LA NYPD and just, uh, just you know, chilling with them. Sometimes. I'd love them to meet you. You don't really love them. I love them to meet you. We would hang out. I know all the the giants. It's that like thing they do on um, MTV or H. We're like being dilated peoples, and yeah. they come in, they make us three look yeah, like, like a rap people. group. Wouldn't that be great? Listen, I told you before. I've always remembered the words of um, of Snoop Doggy Dog. Yeah, bitch is a bitch and a hoe's a hoe. But if a man be acting like a bitch, he's a bitch-ass homie. All yeah, right? those, sure. those are the words from sure. the street. I would, uh, it's, it'd be like you, you two had won a competition or something, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, and I, I just don't think you can, uh, you can believe it that I'd just be hanging out, you know, with sort of like in the crib. People of courage and you get a chance to meet your <laughs> favourite, it'd, it'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Listen, we were talking earlier about, uh, the fact that, um, Bruce Lee, and it's a well-known fact. Yeah. He faked his own death so he could continue his, um, undercover police work, as it, opposed to being- Because no one would, yeah, you know, he doesn't no know one to anyone else. But I was talking to someone as well recently who, um, utterly convinced, and you get this quite a lot, don't you, especially Americans, that, uh, Elvis Presley's still alive. Yeah. And I think, wasn't there some statistic, like, more people believed Elvis was alive than thought, than believed evolution? Was that right? Yes. Like that? No, 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 no. Um, no, it's something worse than that. It's... It could be something... It was something, something like that. It was something mad, like, I don't it? know, it's something like 42% of Americans yeah. believe that Elvis Presley has faked his own death and is still yeah. alive, right? Yeah. And there's this whole book that's been written about it, because, um, Carl, you might be interested in this. I know you're always fascinated by things that have been written down and therefore a gospel. Yeah. And, um... And that you don't have to revise yourself. You just learn off <laughs> exactly. Ian Wright. Yeah. Yeah. But apparently, um, the reason that Elvis is still alive, um, is that there's a number of, uh, sort of, pieces of evidence. One is that no, none of his family could agree which colour pyjamas he was wearing when he died. That's yeah. evidence, apparently. Apparently, um, you know he was an honorary member of the FBI. Well, apparently his signature appears on FBI documents well into the 80s, long after he should have died. Um, apparently no one can agree, there was sums of money a lot that of, only- Yeah, a lot of fat people in dungarees have seen him. Yeah. There's a number of the sums of money which apparently only he could have given authority to have transferred to other bank accounts. They've moved. Yeah. So this is all evidence that Elvis is still alive. 
Mm. And um, a lot of people was understanding this guy. And he was saying, "Yeah, well, of course, the thing is, he, he, the pressures of fame were too much for him. That he faked his own death so that he, he no longer had to be this this huge icon. You know, he could live an ordinary life." And my query has always been this: If Elvis faked his own death, do you think he, the, the method he'd have chosen is to have shat himself to death whilst on the toilet? Yeah. Yeah, but because he picked that, nobody will doubt it. <laughs> So Elvis went to the FBI. Yeah. What do you make yeah. of it? Well, exactly. So what we're saying, Carl, is that there was lots of methods open to him. You know what I mean? It's all like, uh, he didn't go to his his, his secret reason. Go, oh, I'm afraid I want to. I want to fake my own death. You know what I mean, and they yeah. go, yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. And what, hey, what what methods have you got? I like to be found shit myself down the toilet. You like to do what? I want to be a big fat mother on the yeah. toilet, just shit myself to death. Right, I'm just. Oh, this is a good idea. I'm just wondering if there's maybe something a little bit more glamorous for your favourite. I mean, you could take a bullet for the president. Huh. What and shit all over him? Just shit no, 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 we know, we know crap at all. I mean, what's your favourite? No, you just, you just take a bullet for him, or you could. There has to be shit involved. Why is it got to be? Has to be shit involved. Why is it got to be crap? I want this way. Make it happen. Yeah, it's probably Carl head in hand. Yeah, he's worried about the things we say. Yeah. Jeez. We haven't offended 1.2 billion people. Yeah. A, a fifth of the planet. So, Carl, what do you make of it then? Do you, are you convinced like say, Elvis is alive? Um, is, am I getting it mixed up with someone else? Because <laughs> all like, Elvis, no, no, all no, Elvis's look alike. Because... That, now, that is true. A lot of Elvis's do look alike. That's safe. On his gravestone, yeah. didn't they get his name wrong? Or is that his brother? Who's his brother? Um, <laughs> Aaron. No, that's his middle name. Yeah. You're not an Elvis, um, kind of expert, are you? Hold on, was Elvis, was uh, wasn't Elvis a, one of a twin that yeah, died? that died, and I'm sure they got his name wrong on a grave or something. Oh, I don't know. But that's, so that's, consequently, that's proof he's still alive. No, uh, the thing with the, uh, still alive thing, um, like I say, he picked that awkward death because nobody would be saying, hang on a minute, going around upsetting the family, wanting to talk about it because they'd be embarrassed to be saying, you know, we, it was found sort of, yeah. In a pile of mess. Weighing 25 stone. Yeah. yeah. So... Because you notice he also expanded to a huge size as well, so he was just a huge fat blob of a man. He also did that to, to add, you know, extra... So the glamour. I, I don't quite understand all this, these people who fake their deaths, because... I well, a lot of them don't. Work. A lot of them don't, Carl. This is what, this is what, in a roundabout way, we're saying. We're saying that a lot of people that say people fake that they well, didn't, it, it, it like Bruce Lee and uh, James Dean and Elvis Presley, we're saying they didn't fake no, their he, deaths. He did die, didn't he? His head, his head come off, didn't he? <laughs> Fair of God. Who's this? <laughs> James Dean. His head came off. <laughs> there is a light when it goes out. The Smiths, XFM 104.9. Nearly through. Absolutely. Two hours of chat, great music. Bloody good music. Carl. Of course. Speaking yeah, before he <laughs> thinks. thinks. By the way, you know when he was talking about Mowgli? You know he was going to talk about Mowgli and you said, oh, what are the gremlins called? Yeah. Were you thinking of, oh, Mugwai. Mugwai. Yeah, mm. but they were still, fair, they were, they they were, were gremlins. gremlins. Yeah. yeah he was, yeah. I know what you're thinking. I know, to be fair. But my girlfriend won't be listening now, so <laughs> she'll still think I'm a bit daft. She ne how could, why why would she ever think that? How long have you been going out with her? About eight years. Well then, wh why would she ever think you're daft? That's the only stupid thing you've ever said, the, the Mogwai thing. Why would she ever think she's going out with a, to be honest, mm. a retard? I, I think, um, I think it's a very beautiful relationship you must have, you know. Because it's odd, like, I mean, she's a professional journalist or whatever. Yeah. You know, and she works for, is it, uh, Radio 5 or something? BBC Sport. BBC TV. Sport. And so you're a man who never even, uh, got her English examples. English quite good. Her, is her, is English quite good, her? Really good. Yeah? So. And did she do her exams? Yeah. She's quite bright. Sure. So what do you bring to the relationship? <laughs> I, th I think, uh, take the pressure off her. <laughs> take the pressure off her, uh, to do what? You know, like. When she's had a stressful day and she comes home and talks to me, I think. Yeah. You would relax me, and that's the truth. I, 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 honestly, but, you know, Carl, you can just, he can just go, wow, it's all right. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't, he don't get stressed. He sits in his little booth now, he doesn't talk to anyone, his little sound booth, all the week. And you just, you just, 
you in your own little world, aren't you? Well, it's interesting because I wonder sometimes what your aspirations are. I was thinking this, I was watching uh, a repeat of Family Fortunes on uh, Challenge <laughs> TV last night, <laughs> and it was sort of a mid-80s one, and I don't know if it's still the case, but it was the aspirations of the contestants. Yeah. So kind of, it was like, and what's your hobby? Well, you know, um, I like to go out when it's nice weather and oh. stay in well if you, not. if you win two thousand pounds you'd probably be going out when it's nice wouldn't you yeah <laughs> and she was like well and i you know i i sometimes like to watch tv you know and i was thinking wow yeah. man you've really got some incredible but what, 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 what it's I, just like that i'm you're just waiting to die aren't what, you that's what all i feel sorry for right two things that um you know in like stars in their eyes and you get a little fellow and, he, and he's gutting fish in a, some sort of factory in Bolton, and he comes on, and he does, uh, you know, something like Bobby Darren, okay, and he's, a, and, and Matthew Kelly comes out after, he goes, well, I don't think you'll be going back to the fish factory. You will. <laughs> you will be going back. You will. Straight back, yeah. mate. Yeah. Let's yeah. think of don't all wise, the stars in the rise, Kelly, because that's a nasty thing to do. I'm Hear trying me? to think, um, trying to think of all the, uh, stars in the rise contestants that have gone on to great things. What happened to that little fella that looked like the, the little Alsatian puppy that did Christopher? He looks a bit like Christopher. He looked like he, li he had problems. Well, I, yeah, now what was it? Is Ian Moore his name was? Now, he, now, he, he was, uh, Well, I, it's interesting, my friend bought me as an ironic gift for my birthday, he bought me the, uh, live video of Ian Moore. <laughs> Um, you'll be pleased to know that Lady in Red was on there, among a number <laughs> of other hits. Um, but it was, it was when it was caught, it had a picture of Ian on the front, it said, Ian Moore, naturally. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't Jackie know it was, was like, too big for him as well. Of course. It was ludicrous, but I don't know if that meant Ian Moore naturally, like we all know who this guy is, it's Ian Moore. Yeah. Or was it Ian Moore, he's no longer being Christa Burr, he's just naturally. What did he sound like when he wasn't being Christa Burr? Christa Burr. Did he, <laughs> really? Because he met him, didn't he? He met... Yeah. Well, Christopher, I think Christopher couldn't wait to get back on the telly. Well, the thing is, I think, I think Ian Moore is actually earning more than Christopher <laughs> now. I think... <laughs> they could have got Christopher on there. Yeah, you, as can, a you can get Christopher for a thousand pounds, but Ian Moore's going up for twelve hundred <laughs> now. Just a PA to, you know, adapt. <laughs> but he does lay him. He does all the hits. He does, don't pay the fairy man. Yeah. Don't even set a price. <laughs> does all those. Interestingly, I saw him interview once, and uh, Lady in Red's not his favourite song. You're joking. It's bizarre, isn't it? But he was only going to play that if, um, uh, it was the, uh, fat, uh, Ginger... Like, Sarah Ferguson. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was only if she was wearing some red. He was only going to play that when? It, yeah, well, it, it was a live thing, and he was only going to play that if she was wearing red or something. Right. Did her freckles count? That's beautiful. No, so, it, she had, luckily she had a red, that must have clashed with her a bit. Yeah. A red scarf. On on her face and the highlights in your hair that catch the light. Yeah, such a beautiful lyric. Never seen a look as lovely as it. Uh, the thing is, right? He he misses a rhyme there. He goes, uh, "I'm going to ask you to uh, dance, looking for a little romance." Oh, no, now he could yeah. have said dance, <laughs> couldn't yeah. he? I uh, I met a man once in a, in a bar. I was talking to him for some reason. I, I was annoyed by him. I was wound up by him, and um, I said that I'd written Lady in Red, and uh, I never got any money for it because I found that he was like a music lawyer. And he went, well, give me a call, I'll investigate that. <laughs> and he was actually going to do it for me. I, was pr I love the idea of that. <laughs> Why did you say that? Really bored, and I didn't like him much, and I was just, and I thought that was, um... That Why did you choose strange. Lady in Red, though? Because I think I was singing it with a friend of mine, and sure. he came over and went, oh, good voice. And I went, yeah, I wrote this. What pub is this? <laughs> it, was just, it was North. Is it? Yeah. Never seen looking as lovely as you did tonight. So, yeah, um, see. anyway, those, that's enough of my Christopher <laughs> anecdotes. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, very much the end of the show. Uh, and uh, it is, it's been a great, it's been a great show. Hang on, have I got time for a song for the lovers, or have I missed that? No. If, if you give it me Chris now. Ralph. Yeah, what are you gonna play? What are you gonna play? What, are you gonna play a song now and then we've got time for it afterwards? No, you'll have to give it me Yeah. Right oh, now. I better dig it out. Well, can, what, can you keep what, it yeah, what, what have you chosen? I'll, I'll keep it going. Well, um, a friend of mine who keeps making me little compilations is stuck on an old Tom Waits track, which is uh, from his first album, one that I've not listened to for a while. Brilliant. Listen to it, it's absolutely Brilliant. Brilliant. Can anyone hear me? Yeah. Yeah. He's just getting out of his bag now because we were we weren't prepared for this. We we sort of ran out of time. We're having such a great time with the philosophy of Carl. What do you, what do you fancy doing anyway for, with your future? Me? You know, I'm just gonna, just gonna tell you now. You know we're still on air, don't you? <laughs> Before it gets too casual, you know we are still broadcasting yeah, yeah. to the capital. Okay. Yeah. What, what do you fancy doing with your future? Well, see? once I've made all that money from uh, suing Christopher. <laughs> Um, yeah. no, I, you know, my future, I'm living my future, and I wanted to have some good mates like yourself and Ricky. Yeah. You know, Carla wanted to be on the radio, we're wanted to be, play great we're, songs. We're like the Three Musketeers, me, you and see, we're, it's like, we're like the original Rat Pack, which we're like Ocean's Eleven, I'm Sinatra. Yeah. Um, you're, you, you're Sammy Davis Jr., and you're, what's his name, D Martin, aren't you? Yeah, or Joey Lawrence. What's his name, Joey Lawrence, not Joey Lawrence, Joey Bishop. Joey Deacon. Joey Deacon. <laughs> <laughs> My dad said the ending on the old one's better than the new one. <laughs> 
We should definitely get your dad in, man. That would be just dynamite. When people get tired of you, we've got, we've got the whole Pilkington family to <laughs> The whole gene pool. Have you seen it? No. Carl, have we got time for this now, really, what, mate? What <laughs> To be fair. Okay, it's track number one. Now, interesting thing about Tom Waits is that, um, this is from his first album, and he doesn't sound like that kind of gruff, you know, lived-in guy that he wants to be. He something of a crooner. Yeah. But this is a track called Old 55, which bizarrely, I think, might have been covered by the, um, the Eagles. But anyway, so I think it's a really no lovely track, really beautiful track. I'll see you next week. And we'll see you next time. Say goodbye, Carl. So yeah. Say sorry. For what? For if you offended anyone. I didn't. <laughs> so if I say sorry, that's saying I'm guilty. <laughs>
and we've got, we've found his score, we tracked him down, we've got Carl's GC, see, it's, what's, what, what does that say? <laughs> How many did you get, Rick? Clinic, walking with these. Sorry about that earlier. You know I like to keep a tight, slick ship, and that lets us all down, doesn't it? When something goes wrong with the shoddy equipment in this place. Mm -hmm. what, why are you buying some new stuff? You must be earning a bit of money now, wasn't you? We've got a few listeners now, we get adverts, don't we? Why don't they just buy a new CD player? You can go down to Richard Sounds and get one for 50 quid. Yeah. I don't know. Because I suppose when you're starting off, you, you save the money you make first before you spend it. Uh, go down record and tape exchange, take all the four non-blondes and excess stuff you've got. And the record label. You'll be able to get an old there CD player. 25 minutes this week it took. Well, <laughs> the, four, the four non-blondes, <laughs> as <laughs> you mentioned. I think we, should, I think we should make that some sort of call in to win feature. <laughs> Carl, are we using the equipment that you used to use when you had uh, Pilkey's Making Music, the DJ outfit that I you made I love around? that. It, that was Carl Pilkerton and someone making? Colin, Colin, Colin Making. Colin, Colin Making. Colin Pilkey's Making Music. Genius. That's are we using right. that same equipment? Did you earn any money? Um, I, I paid for the tube lights and that. I, I sort of covered my costs. Did you? Did and you pay tax it? on that? And then, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, that's why they get Al Capone on, innit? <laughs> it is, yeah. That's yeah. right. Don't worry about the music policy. We're sorting that out. We've got some Verve coming up. we got, uh, some Jimmy Webb. we got some Nick Cave. we got some Amy Mann. we got some Travis Corner Shop. You know what I mean? We're, we're sorting yeah, ourselves out. We just start, we haven't started yet. We're just starting getting going. we got exa- uh, Carl's GCSE result. Let's just do it now. Should we do it now? Well, let's, I think we should have a, a white van man session. Oh, white van man. I think people best. tune in for the white van man yeah, session. Yeah, people who haven't tuned in, they don't know. If people aren't familiar with this, uh, <laughs> The Sun runs a column uh, every day which is uh, asking some punter from the street their views on the week's big uh, events, and we just thought, why not hijack that idea, but apply it to Carl Pilkington. I Carl? seen much news again this week. You've not seen much news? Don't worry, I'm sure you have an opinion on just that. Just have you, just g give us it from your heart. So gladiator. Okay, so, well, on the subject of gladiator, what do you make of Russell Crowe's appalling behaviour at the BAFTAs? This is, um, I heard a bit about this. This is, um, when he, he got some director or something, because... Director or producer and threatened him, because they cut his bit, didn't they? But, yeah, they cut a poem that he'd done during See, the acceptance speech. I, I watched it on Sunday night. Sorry. I didn't realise it wasn't live, to be honest. Yeah. But, um, I quite liked the way it was to the point and didn't mess about. It was, he went up, he said thanks. So you're saying that he shouldn't have beaten up the, uh, director? <laughs> Is that uh, what you're basically saying? It's a bit over the top. You thought I so? I mean, <laughs> if you didn't have time, if you really, I mean, what's, what's the poem got to do with the, the film anyway? He, he was an awards So do you think it's ever justified to beat up a TV director if you're a major Hollywood star? Depends what he's done, but I mean... <laughs> right, what would he have to have done, Carl, for it to be fine for him to then beat him up? The thing is, right, forget all the beating up. At the end of the day, it was a awards thing for a film. The poem had nothing to do with the film. Yeah. So go up, collect your award for that thing. And if you really, really wanted people to hear about this poem, he could have photocopied it <laughs> and sure. left it at the entrance and said, on your way out, this is a really nice poem, pick one up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the thing is... He knew it was televised, so he knew by saying that poem once, he was reaching five million people. That's a, not, that's a lot of photocopies. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm yeah, not saying he was justified. It wasn't, wasn't a poem award. If it was a, an <laughs> award show for poems, you'd say you can't cut it out. It'd be like doing the top 40 and then going, number one's good, but we haven't got time for it. <laughs> but, but it's a films thing. Okay. And he went up and he got the award for the film. Which film was it for? <laughs> I don't know, but when I wanted to give you results, I said, I said, let's give Carl his results. Steve went, no, we should introduce people to Carl again, just remind people what Carl's like. And he's so right. I'm so glad we did this first. <laughs> I'm alright, though. All right, Carry on, then. Steve. Okay, the next, uh, the next topic, um, what about this big debate over whether Kylie Minogue's had a bum job? I'd have to see it. <laughs> <laughs> next! <laughs> okay. Um, uh, what do you make of Will Young's single? He's the pop idol winner. Uh, it's gonna, uh, net record-breaking sales, apparently. It's gonna yeah. be straight to number one. He's had millions of copies sold. I heard last week that you had to, um, <laughs> if you wanted to buy it from Woolworths, you had to go in 
and put a pound down to guarantee you're getting a copy. Wow. I think that's stupid. But what do you make of it though? Do you think, well, um, as a song? As both as a song and do you, are you excited about Will Young and his future? No, it'll do all right. I don't think we, we have to worry about him. Okay. It, it'll, yeah, it'll, it'll do all right. It's not my thing, but seems like a nice bloke. Okay, good. really good. Um, what one do you final make? One. Yeah, one final one then. Um, what do you make of our scientists getting the go ahead to clone embryos for research? We have discussed cloning before, and obviously there's uh, the pros and cons of that. Christopher Reeve, former Superman star, he's behind this. Are you behind him? Yeah. I mean, with everything, you have your good and your bad, don't you? Yeah. At the end of the day, uh, if you didn't have bad things in the world, then you wouldn't enjoy the good things. I think, you know, it's like if you didn't have robbers in the world, policemen wouldn't have a job. So it's the same thing. It's like, it's an illness. Yeah. So what, 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 what are they messing with? <laughs> it's probably a bit too detailed to go into there, really, but, um. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's good and bad. You can't have it all. Yin and yang is what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Carl, I can't argue with that, mate. Um, I want to play a track now that, uh, I haven't heard for a while. It's the verb, isn't it? Yeah. Sonnet. Lovely song. Coming soon, those big exam results. <laughs> <laughs> Rebel Motorcycle Club, spread your love, it's time to give Carl, you're actually nervous, I, I'm a little bit nervous, uh, just to uh, recap, Carl is 30 this year, he never went to get his results of his GCSEs, so myself and Steve took upon ourselves to phone his school, track them down, and we actually got your results. What did you think you took? Uh, did English. Right. Maths. Yeah. Uh, art. Right. Uh, and a... I think I did physics. Okay. Well, you didn't do any of them. Eh? You didn't do any of them. You didn't register. You registered for one exam and took one exam and got results for one exam. So I don't know what you thought you were turning up to or you weren't registered or you didn't. You're familiar with the notion of registering for an exam. You have to kind of officially register in order to be eligible. What do you mean, register? I turned up for a couple. Yeah, you can't yeah. just show up. You have to <laughs> register for them. <laughs> you have you to pay this because it costs the school money, so they have had to have paid for you if they thought you were going to pass. You can't just turn up on the day and ask some paper at the front. I never got a letter telling me that. Well, that's because you were never at school. But you did ma somehow register or registered for one exam. You registered for history. <laughs> <laughs> it's a topic that you've always been interested in. I, w I was saying to Ricky before, uh, World War Two. I loved it. Um, <laughs> not, I mean, not the actual event. No, the but study just of it. All you the mean. stuff like you know about the Anderson shelters and uh, stuff like that. Yeah. The bombs and that. Mm -hmm. And um, and then when I took it, it had nothing to do with that. It was more about the Tudors. So it didn't. The Second World War didn't come up. You mean there were no questions about the Anderson shelters? Nothing. That's devastating. So. So well, what are you expecting the result to be? Is that, seriously, is that it? Yeah, it's the only one you took and registered. As far as the school is concerned, or yeah. certainly well, it's certainly in terms the only of one that counts. Us. It's the only result, it's the only one that counts. Yeah, you've got... I don't... Did you register for yours? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. I have, yeah, I've got certificates and everything. So what, do you do that before the exam? Do you have to go somewhere <laughs> and sign something, or...? Yeah, you don't check your results and then decide if you want to register. It's not like a millionaire, when you look at the question and go, oh, I think I'll take the money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you go... <laughs> Uh, no. But anyway, you must have registered for one, or maybe your teacher put it in. Put you I in well, I didn't do it. They must have been confident. They must have been confident. They must have thought your best bet was history. <laughs> right. So, what did they get? Um, you got an E, which uh, which I think, I mean, technically, is a pass. E. It's a bad pass, but there's F, C and I'll there's. I mean, you're not going to be doing a PhD. <laughs> you, you, you can get an F, right, which is fail. And then a U, which is ungraded. Now I don't know why the U exists, because F means you failed. U is like them going, you not only failed, but you wasted my time. <laughs> so <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> we're annoyed <laughs> yeah, that you took yeah. this exam. So, so they thought you'd... they'd register me to get an E. <laughs> well, they didn't. Well, they, didn't, they, get I think they, they were hoping. It was rather like you with the lottery. They were you hoping see, for something better than. You nothing. see, I, I assume that the man who registered for that thought he can scrape an E if Anderson shout was come up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's it. You've got, you've got... Now, what I'd like to do, Carl, is... I've started your re-education. You've read a book on Rasputin. I'll be asking a few questions about that later. 
I've got another book for you to read next week. Next week, I'm I've not, got I'm a little- not in the mood. What? Not in the mood. Oh, come on! Look! What's that? What does that say? It's that fella- it's the picture of the bloke that he used to use for Citizen Smith. Yeah? Che Guevara. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was quite happy, I think, when he found out that Robert Lindsay was involved. He went, yeah, of course you can. <laughs> no worries. No worries, yeah. What so, are your feelings, Carl? What, what, what do you what think? Are you depressed? I'm just a bit annoyed because I'm sure I turned up for more, so it just wasted me time. <laughs> Listen, yeah. they don't matter. I'm, I'm sure you're doing. You're doing more. very well. You, you, you know, you can educate yourself. Uh, GCSEs are merely a step on the ladder to help you, not just for education, but, you know, they're, they're, they're more vocational than anything else. You're doing very well and you're reading books. Don't worry about it. But it's not a concern. Thing. But if you want, if you want, I'll pay for you to take history again. Carl, we'd love to see you get a C or above. And well, we're I'll, willing I'll pay to for you and I'll get you some books, right? Now listen, listen, listen. Um, we can, look, look let, let's get, I, I reckon, wh when are the exams? June? Something like that, yeah. We're registered, we're trying to register next week and I reckon you can get an A or B. In I'm history. Busy, in history. No, I'm don't on. worry about it, it's just easy. You get your Brody's notes. If Heat, Heat magazine, they, 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 they love you, Carl. They can probably sort some out. They can probably pay for a tutor. They got a lot of money, they sell a lot of magazines. I mean, it is always, almost always, and you found that out, I discovered this, it's always the Tudors and Stuarts. There's no fear for that, they're not coming up. Now what do you know, what do you already know about them? You must know already know stuff about Henry VIII and Elizabeth. No, cause it just, it's too long ago to even get interested in. Do you know what I mean? You can't <laughs> is that why you didn't? Okay. You, the Anderson thing, it was like, God, you know, I bet my mum and dad were in an Anderson shelter. You know, this is interesting. What, when they- Oh, my granddad would have, like, had something to do with this. <laughs> but the Tudors, it's like, I don't know even if they had a family back then. Play <laughs> 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 record, we come back hang to on, this. Hang sorry, on, hang on, I just, sorry. sorry, no, I just, cause I need to introduce my new, the, the new feature. Yeah. For the I record. don't know if I had a family back then. Go on, listen, let me just ask you now, right, if you can finish this sentence, we've got a chance. Divorce beheaded died, divorce beheaded. Died. What is it? We just need to do a little bit of work, but otherwise I think you're gonna be fine. It's how you remember what happened to Henry VIII's wives. They're little- Divorce beheaded died, divorce beheaded- Uh. It's like spam. Support- What is it? Support protection anchorage movement. That's how you're you gonna work. That's nothing to do with the tutor No, that's to do with the skeleton. <laughs> yeah, see, no, we're not doing the biology. and, uh, acronyms what, and- What happened to Henry VIII's last wife? Did she die? Or did she not die? Divorce beheaded died, divorce beheaded. Do you know that the only king that has got a moustache <laughs> is, no, <laughs> the only king that hasn't got a moustache is <laughs> the king of arts on the playing cards. What's the record you play? Um, I want to resurrect the career of a different artist each week. This is an artist who's overlooked by the general public. It's a red card. <laughs> this is Amy Mann, and she always seems to get overlooked. This was a single a while back. Well, I think it's called I. Red Vines. Play it, Carl. Fantastic. You see, what upsets me is the way that Amy Mann, yeah. she's written songs as good as that, she's yeah. released it as a single, she had to, I think, put the album from which that's taken out by herself over the internet, she was Oscar nominated yeah. for the songs in the film Magnolia, she couldn't get a record label, I don't know if she's now got one, and yet there's people like Alanis Morissette shifting that is shed loads beautiful. of songs, that I don't understand fantastic. what the rules are, I don't know why she, she's not a household Carl, name. Well, there's what? beautiful things like that in the world, why do you care about a poxy well, GCSE? What, what did she get for history? <laughs> what did she get for history? Yeah. I think she did very poorly. <laughs> Why do you care? See, I was just gonna say, this has backfired a little bit because Carl is genuinely, I don't know if he's actually upset or embarrassed, but it doesn't matter. It, why does it matter? You were, you were 15 and didn't go to school. If you were my friends, I think you would have just said, oh, we can't find them. Why? Because but you just wanted matter, to know. What to do with that? Well, what do you mean? What do you mean? It's ridiculous. Do it, do it again because you want to learn because there's like, there's great things in the world to learn about. Don't worry, the GCC is vocational, it is, you know, it's vocationally for a 15, 16 year old to go on to A levels or, or whatever or to get results but you don't, you don't, you don't need that because you've done very well. Um, you, oh, well, you don't care about the Tudor and the Stuarts. I mean, d d you know. I mean, I've had a couple of jobs, not this one because you don't need qualifications to get, get a job. Obviously. Yeah. In the radio. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The yeah. ones that I have got, 
in the past. I did, because I didn't collect them, I had to lie. And I didn't, I didn't like go mad, I didn't say I had A's and stuff. <laughs> but I think, I mean I didn't put history down so I didn't even know I did it. <laughs> like, so it's a bonus. I, I, I kind of treated myself to like a D and a couple of C's and that, so it's like, well he's not. I love yeah. the fact that part even then was honourable. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll at least put down the ones I think I took and lie, but the ones I didn't take, yeah. I won't lie about. Yeah, and, and don't give yourself a B. <laughs> exactly. If they're gonna find out you lie, give yourself a B no, well, next it time, Carl. It could backfire, couldn't it? I mean, my brother's a bit mental and he used to do things like go for jobs and say, oh yeah, I've done this before. Like, being a, a mechanic and he's <laughs> never even picked up a spanner. <laughs> and yet, he'd have the confidence to go and f try and fix cars. <laughs> well, I'm not that daft, but, God, an E. Do, do you, who, who do you blame for this? That's just an easy way out. I have to blame myself. Don't yeah. I? What was but, the teacher like? Well, there's loads of different ones. I didn't like. I mean, the history teacher. She. It is my own fault because with her, she's a bit mental, and <laughs> I used to kind of stop the lesson by saying, "Oh, Miss, tell us about your your um, fireplace you've got that is made from a gravestone." Because <laughs> that's what. <laughs> that she would had. stop any history teacher in their no, tracks. And she loved telling you about it. Yeah. So it was like, oh, I learned yeah. that from a teacher. So that's why yeah. I didn't know about divorce, head loss. <laughs> and all that. Yeah. Dandruff legs. Because Horse head loss. Dandruff legs. Well, re remember now, divorce beheaded died, divorce beheaded survived. That's all you got to remember. And what, what's that? That's the, what happened to uh, Henry VIII's various In order. Wives. In order. What does it spell out? No, it doesn't spell out. It doesn't spell out. anything. You just got to remember it. the rhythm. I, in order, in order in which he married. Yeah, but it helps. It's like when my mum <laughs> taught me the alphabet, she taught me as like a song. A, and like B, C, constant D, E, F, G. Yeah, constantly. Yeah. No, not like that. Huh. That's how everyone else could do it, and I couldn't do it that way. <laughs> what that tune did she do it to? CD, it was, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. <laughs> Dandy Warhols, get off on XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Hello. It's five past two on the day that Carl, our producer, found out that he had an E in history, GCSE, and nothing else because he didn't actually register. I can't believe he registered for that. I don't know. I didn't. That's Someone else put you in. They, they, they can't have put you in because you were away. They probably said, oh, you know, they didn't, you didn't register in that. Listen, obviously, you're feeling a little bit melancholy because melancholy, it's, you know, it's, it's, like, it's like you're hearing it for the first time, so it's like you're 16 again. But you, it was to be expected. But no, listen, I, I, it doesn't I, matter. It actually it doesn't, doesn't matter. It doesn't. But listen, but listen, take it again, take it again, for your just, just, is there, is there a history teacher listening? Um, what's the number? Oh seven, oh eight seven hundred, eight hundred one two three. Four. They can tell us the syllabus this year. One, two, three, four, is it? Yeah. Oh, sorry, what is it? Oh eight seven hundred. And I did, I got, I've got maths. Uh. Uh, oh eight seven hundred, eight hundred one two three four. four. Mine's more laziness that I couldn't be able to say that last digit. Yeah. Yeah. Really. I done the, yeah, the, most of the work. Yeah, let's not, let, if we get onto your problem, <laughs> <laughs> then we're gonna be, it's a whole other show. It doesn't yeah. matter really, because like you say, right, I've done alright for myself. Yeah. It's that, it's that old thing of like, um, when you get older, if you find out that your dad's not your dad, it's like, it doesn't matter, he was a dad to me. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. So... Are you saying Mr. Nuttall wasn't your real teacher? <laughs> 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 Give out the number again, Rick, what are we after? Um, 08700 800 1234. Is no there a history teacher history. out there that may know how we can, is he too late to register at this time? What's the syllabus this it? year? What's the syllabus this year? Do we have to pay for it? And does he want to earn like 25 quid cash in hand to give Carl a couple of lessons? I'll stump that up. Take it, yeah? Be great. It'd be fantastic. They probably won't want to do it though. We'll film thing, it. It'll it? be a documentary on choice. <laughs> <laughs> Heat magazine be right behind it. There'd be, you know, little clues. We could have a little question and ask little quizzes. You know what I mean? Be Rick, great. before we play the next record, I've just been looking through the XFM gig guide and I just want to let you know that uh, at Spitz this evening, Commercial Street E1, doors at 8 o'clock, <laughs> Gut Bucket are playing. <laughs> so, no, just a lot of people, listeners will probably want to know that. So I don't want anyone to miss out on the Gut Bucket gig at Spitz tonight, Commercial Street E1. <laughs> really, that's a good plug for the, uh, the Gut Bucket boys. Well, ladies and um, gentlemen, welcome to the stage. Now, Steve just played one of the most beautiful records. I mean, that, uh, uh, so uh, I've got up the ante here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna play another Jimmy Webb track. I played it off 10 easy pieces. Uh, last week, and I have played this track before, but a different version. You'll know it, um, obviously better by Glen Campbell. He wrote a lot of songs for Glen Campbell, and this is Galveston, and this is absolutely beautiful. Mm. 
Jimmy Webb there and, uh, Galveston. See, and during that, Carl said, what's this about? Didn't ya? See, it's, th it's things you're interested in, you see? If only that in you that inquisitive when the Tudors and Stuarts came up, you'd have- you'd have a C or see, a B. See, we didn't even do Stuarts. Didn't ya? It's just Tudors. Oh, they're the worst, aren't they? Stuarts, I've got a lot of time for, the Tudors can- you know what I mean? Listen, right. As you know, I, I lent Carl, part of his education, his historical <laughs> education, I lent Carl, um, Gladiator, the movie on DVD, which he watched on his PlayStation 2, and, uh, Rasputin. Do you know last week when you gave me this, did you know my result for history? No. That's weird, isn't it? Yep. Now, uh, right, okay, it's the film review. Carl, you just, just tell it from the heart, tell us what you thought about the film, what you thought the- Can I just ask, is this the first time you'd seen Gladiator? You'd never seen it before? No. Okay. And what were your thoughts? Okay. The film of you. Gladiator. Um. It's all right. Noth nothing great. Uh. It's like it's like an old um sort of an old version of Rocky done in the olden days, really. Right. A bloke fighting other people. Sure. Um. How, how sort of well known is the story? Do you reckon people know the, the basics? Well, just very, very quickly, just do right, the plot. quickly. There's a guy called Max. Um... Maximus, yeah. Yeah. There's Caesar, and there's Caesar's kid, and, uh, Max goes to war, sort of wins it, comes back, uh, Caesar says, you're good at what you do. Me, I wish my son was as good as you. Uh, so I want you to be in charge when I die. His kid finds out, Bit annoyed about it, kills his dad because he don't want anyone to hear that he said that he wants him to be in charge. Yeah. So his kid gets in charge and thinks, "I'll show you. You're not going to be a king. I am. You're going to be a slave or something." And then next thing you see is. My, him sorry, can I just stop there? My only thought is the film's three hours long, so <laughs> maybe we should go through the we've, whole plot. We've, then. we've done the first ten minutes. But yeah. Go on. So yeah, he's a slave, and then. Yeah, but then that, that that was an interesting bit that I thought. Right. I mean, I was watching this with a girlfriend. She was already annoyed because she wanted to watch Friends on E4. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so it was a good episode as well this week. Was it? Yeah. Don't tell her that. Okay. Right. So um. <sighs> so she so she was annoyed. And she said, "Come on, then, put it on." <laughs> and I got it wrong straight away because it says on the back 149. So I thought that was an hour and 49 minutes. It turned <laughs> out it was 149. No, I thought it was one hour 49. Yeah. But it was 149 minutes. Sure. So it it overran anyway. By 40 minutes. Yeah. So anyway, the interesting bit was where he was going across a desert on a horse. And I think to show you how long he'd been going across a desert on his horse, he's showing you a shot of the horse's knees and they were bleeding. <laughs> and I just wondered whether that's what horses do if they run for a long time. Can, do you know? I don't. Good. Right, so anyway, so he goes on, get, he keeps going on like this. Um, he's a slave and then he has a fight at the end with the Caesar's kid and he kills him. And that, that's how it ended. Okay, good. What did you think of it? Just generally, what, what bits, what do you think was wrong with it? Right, well I've read up on it and there's already a, a fact that is wrong. Right. Max, no, Caesar's kid, he didn't actually kill his dad, his dad died of a natural death. Right, in real life you in, mean? Yeah. Okay. And, um, what's, what's Caesar's kid's name? C comedian or something? Comedian. I think it's comedian, yeah. Yeah. That's where the name comes from, the, the, when you, you know, a funny person is called a comedian. He didn't imagine. actually get killed in real life by Max. No. He died by his sister poisoning him and, um, and he didn't da no, no, Are no. you saying, are you saying that this is not a historical document? It's, it's, oh, it's wrong. All over the place. Yeah. Well, well in terms week, of- Well, next week I'm giving you Braveheart and that is actually true. That is actually, that, that is, that is factually no, accurate. I can't handle it. It is, handle it is. It, is. it was a little Australian listen, fella that helped him out. Just for people who watched it, you know that the, the, um, uh, the, the guy, Caesar's kid. Yeah. He died, uh, his sister tried to poison him, that didn't work. And apparently he was a gay fella. <laughs> And his boyfriend, who was a wrestler, strangled him. That's well, where did you story. get this information? On the internet. I thought I'd look it up to see how much of it I actually got right. Yes. <laughs> and that's what I read. Okay, so, uh, out of ten? <sighs> Five. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's no good. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get it out. And what, it's annoying the way it says, like, 
you know, this film's got to be seen at the cinema, because I saw it at home, and I don't think I missed out on anything. Very good point. I think that's the, probably the point they're making, but yours is, yours is valid too. We'll play a record, and after that, I'm going to ask you about Rasputin, the Mad Monk. Sing, sing, sing. Travis and Sing. I like that. That's all right. It's a bit, it's a bit easy. It's not their best. I like their earlier stuff a little bit better, you know. But what I don't like is them throwing around mollusks. I don't like it when that poor little octopus gets flung around. I know it's dead, but there's something, there's a certain lack of respect for the, for the old mollusk, for the, mini. for the squid and yeah. octopi fraternity. Like I said to you, when I used to go to Wales for my holidays, they mm. used to get washed up on the beach and people used to go over them on the motorbikes. <laughs> and they were ch cheering and stuff, and it's just like, do you, do you realise what you're doing? Yeah, yeah. sick, isn't it? But anyway, uh, Gladiator, just was going to add on the end of that. Um, if you're into that sort of film, Jason and the Argonauts is probably a better bet. <laughs> is that factually a a accurate? Did you look that up a lot? Did, did, did skeletons actually come out of the ground and fight Yeah. Them? I don't know, but it's a more enjoyable film. Okay. It's okay. shorter. Okay, now, um, just moving, um, quickly on, just the last item on Carl's re-education this week. Uh, Rasputin, you read a little book about Rasputin? Uh, what did you know about Rasputin before you read the book, Carl? Can I just tell you, oh. when I handed him this book, it was my house as well. He went, he went, ah, oh, is he the one that lived under the bridge? <laughs> and I went, what do you mean? He went, the fellow under the bridge, and he had to, he went, and you had to pass him with a, with a, yeah, and Jane, um, went, you're thinking of, um, Rapunzel. And he went, yeah. And I went, well, that's not Rapunzel either. <laughs> Rapunzel, Rapunzel's, you had to say, isn't that, you know, you had to guess his The person who lived under the bridge was a troll in the three little, yeah, three little graphs. I'm a troll, foldy well. So, to answer your question, Steve, that's what he knew about Rasputin, <laughs> okay? So have you read this whole book? Can I just have a look at it, Rick? This whole book, it's about the size of a beer mat. Yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking, but did, did, so did you read the whole thing? No. You didn't well, manage you to didn't read the whole thing? you didn't even do that? Well, again, some of the names in there are so long and foreign sounding that I just thought, <coughs> I can't, I can't remember all these. So no. I just got to the meat of the story. Go on, okay, what, what did you learn from about Rasputin? Right, um, he was, um, he was a monk. Yep. And, um, uh, Mad? He... Was he a mad monk? Hang on a minute. Don't, Don't confuse him. Sorry. Right. Go on. Um, God. You see, this is what happened in the exams. <laughs> <laughs> right, he was, he was... Oh, don't do that when I'm drinking, Carl, was, please, mate. He loved his women. <laughs> that's how, how the story started off. Uh, he had really <laughs> nice... The story started off? Yeah. He had really nice eyes, and that's what everyone fell for, especially the women. Yeah. Anyway, they thought, the people back then thought he had special powers because, um, he could hypnotise people or something. Oh, yeah. And it was about a little lad who, um, yeah. who had some sort of blood clot on his leg. And, um, and he said, just calm down and you'll be alright. And people thought he had special powers, but what it was, what he was doing, he was saying calm down and he relaxed and it stopped the blood flowing sort of as fast. Mm. And that's how he got better. But anyway, that's the only bit of special work that he did. And then he kept going on, and he was going in brothels and all that. And, um, and the people in the town thought, this isn't right. He shouldn't be going about doing this. And, um... Where does he live? Uh, Russia. Right. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. What sort of era? I thought you'd, like, now, you know, about 1800. Okay. All right. Okay. And, um, and then... Do you want to check people, that, Steve? You got the book? People well, got I know sick for of fact him. That's not right. People got sick of him, and, um, and they said, oh, we'll have to get rid of him. So they tried to, he, he loved cakes as well as women. Okay. So they said, let's poison a cake, and they poisoned a load Easier of cakes. Easier than poisoning a woman, wouldn't and, it? Uh, and, uh, and he ate these cakes, and it just didn't kill him, and they, they were like, God, what's going on? And they kept giving him more and more cakes, and... He <laughs> <laughs> <It> was suspicious. <laughs> and that didn't work, so the fella said, oh, sir, I'm gonna shoot him. So... <laughs> <laughs> well, I imagine it was the end of his tether. So, I mean, he was back and forth to Mr. Kipling's, you know, like, He on. shot him once, and that didn't work, and the fella thought, oh my god, and he started running away, and Rasputin's running after him, and he shoots him like another, I think he took four Face bullets. Face full of, uh, Battenberg. Four, <laughs> four bullets. Who's the swear, then? Four bullets. It took to kill him, and then this fella who was after him chucked him in an icy lake, and that was the end of him, but I don't understand... <laughs> Sort of. What do you understand, Carl? Well, the fact that, you know, he's a bit of a name in history. 
and I don't understand why, because <laughs> it just sounds a bit like my brother. <laughs> Does he love women and cakes? And do you think that'll be his downfall? <laughs> right, I want you to study. Right, if you want to do, uh, that's the first introduction. Right, if you want to do some extracurricular, what would that um, get stuff, me? Get there's there's a song by Boney M that. Yeah, yeah, lays yeah. It out. Suzanne told me about that, saying about uh, <laughs> Russia's greatest love machine. Yeah, but it didn't say anything about cakes. No, so I think if you get the twelve-inch mix, no, but they, 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 like they see it, 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 according to Boney M, and I don't know who's who's correct, the bloke wrote that or M. Um, they put some poison into his wine. Now I don't know if uh, uh, M have done their research mm -hmm. or whether yeah, uh, they did suit him until he was dead. Um, it, I put it he was the greatest love machine in Russia. I, again, I don't think it says that in the book, but no. M might know more than that fella. So what's know. your final verdict on, uh, Ra Ra Rasputin? Just, um, just a normal bloke who didn't have that much luck, really. I, I you know, I, that's, that's what I don't understand. I was waiting for something special at the end, but... Just a normal fellow, really. Yeah. yeah, just an everyday, happens all the time, doesn't it? Just an everyday mad monk. Yeah, just an everyday mad monk, you have to shoot and poison and throw in icy lakes to kill him, and, uh, who, uh, loves women and cakes. I mean, come on, do we need another one of them? <laughs> Boring! Oh. What would you say about him, then? How would you sum him up? I think you've done it. I think you've done it. There you go. So next week, Che Guevara, you gonna read the book? I don't know. Come yeah. on. Next week, Che Guevara, take it home. There he is. Give it over. Good luck. Cheers. Barbara's Rocks. The sugar babes are freaks electric. Are they, Carl? I don't know. I feel like, uh, it feels like Christmas Day. Well, you didn't get the gift you wanted. Yeah, do you know that, like, anti-climax? Yeah. When, uh, You've been looking forward to it for so long. Yeah, you know. Well, I mean, I knew you were looking forward to it. That's why it took you 14 years <laughs> to get the result, and then it was two other people that got them for you. Do you so wish I... that we hadn't done it? Uh, no. It's all right. It's all right, isn't it? What's your girlfriend going to say? I don't think I'll see her again. <laughs> <laughs> she, she likes a man who knows about the Tudors and Stuarts, does she? Yeah, first gladiator, then this. Yeah, you've been bluffing. She goes, whenever she said, "What does it go to Stuarts?" Go. Good. Like, <laughs> yeah. lot, lots of things, but I, uh, look, 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 it's a bird. What happened to uh, Henry VIII's last wife? Oh, oh I wouldn't, I, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, look, Friends is on <laughs> telly. Friends is off. Can yeah. I just change the subject by saying things like, you know, about the, the only king in a pack of cards? <laughs> <laughs> that threw off the scent. That <laughs> it threw us off the scent. That wouldn't, that wouldn't fool an invigilator, would it? Mm. That's the thing. You can't use that one. Uh, with an exam board. Carl, have you ever logged on to Friends Reunited? It was the site that everyone was talking about last year. No. Are you aware of the concept? I've heard about it, but there's no one from school who had won a hook up again, really. So basically, for those that don't know, you have to log on to his website and then you can help, it helps you track down your old schoolmates if they've also logged on and stuff. And, uh, we sort of took the liberty, really, of, of looking on the Friends Reunited site and typing in your school and trying to track down any of your old mates. We didn't get in touch with any of them, don't we worry. We didn't do that. We're we not going to surprise you with them now. No. But I was just interested to know, like, some of your thoughts on some of the names that I could run past you. I mean, these are people from your year. Um, just tell me if you recognise the names. Alison Birch? Think I remember her. What's your thought? What's your thoughts on it? Uh, posh don't, don't, girl, don't, don't be libelous. Don't yeah. say, don't be like, no. No. Um, Posh, uh, probably did pretty well in history and that. <laughs> Sarah Morris? God, yeah. Remember, uh. Go on. You're grinning. What's the thought? <laughs> Go on. No, just, um, she was alright. She was a popular one. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> it was, she was nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, okay, what about, uh, Darren Buckley? He was, uh, he was one of my best mates. Was he really? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. What do you reckon he's doing now? Do you still keep in touch? Um, when my mum and dad were still in Manchester and they had a butty shop, he used to go in because the bookies was next door. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why he paints a picture. He used if, to, uh, If you did this in your history exam, Carl, you will walk it. Go on. So you, your parents had a butty shop, there was a bookies next door? Yeah, and he, 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 he liked having a bit of a gamble, so he used to, um, I think he works for some insurance company. Do you think that his fiance Beth knows he's got a gambling problem? <laughs> Yeah. Or his two-year-old son, Lewis. No. Yeah, they live in Cheadle H Hume. Hume. Uh, Hume. He must be doing well. It's He's still supporting the Blue Army and frequents the shrine on a fortnightly basis. Funny thing with him is, right, when, um, <laughs> I used to stay over at his house and, um, his dad was a copper 
<laughs> and um, <laughs> uh, I remember <laughs> his dad came down and said, right, I want to see you two. I thought, oh, God, what's happened? And um, got us round the, round the table. He said, um, <laughs> do you know much about drugs? So we were like, what's all this about? So he goes, you know, they, they're not they're not good for anyone, you know, the stupid thing to get into. And we're like, yeah, we know. And he went, you know, do you? We said, yeah. He said, what's this then? And he'd found something in his bedroom, and it was a skittle. <laughs> what the sweets? You know, little sweets with the S on it. <laughs> and it oh was really? Like drugs. <laughs> yeah. So he said, well, yeah, it's a skittle. Yeah, I know what it is. He said, oh, he's bluffing like that is a slang word. Yeah, he thought, he thought, because he was a copper, he probably had to be down with all the terms and that. So we said, oh, it's a skittle. And he, he said, yeah, yeah, I know what it is, but what's it doing in your bedroom? <laughs> oh. And it was like, no, it's a toffee. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Darren, uh, yeah, I know, it's a toffee, it's a squid, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, yeah. Carl, more people from your, uh, past. Debbie Carr? Yeah, she was, uh, she was another nice one. <laughs> one <laughs> what uh, does that mean? Is that a euphemism? <laughs> no, she was one of them that you'd sort of, go, she's nice, but you, she'd never be your girlfriend. Do you know what I mean? She was, Not really. Even though she was in the same year, she seemed a lot older. Right. And like, wasn't a teacher, was it? There was, there was three of them who all hung together, and they seemed to hang around like the older kids, the ones who looked like men. Do you know what I mean? They had yeah. What did you look like, like then? Well, it's just that I, I had youthful sort of looks, sure. whereas like the older ones had like beards and stuff. <laughs> It's the gang of boys in the fifth form with beers. Were they smoking pipes? <laughs> Go, come over here, me filly. Oh, you, you, oh, you Debbie Carr, come over here, you little beauty. No, but she was like, I love that. Oh, like, was hanging around with beers. There's the big boys. Oh, fishing. That's <laughs> lovely beers. What do you I mean? just see a, a whole row of George Bernard Shaw's. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do in history, boy? Yeah. They got an E. You're an idiot. Oh. They were like, um, you know, I'd be there, sort of. Plain punching people in the arm. Cause he's oh, yeah. oh, that's a great game. Oh, I love that punch people in the arm. Is that part of the Olympics? Now? <laughs> it's, 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 I think it was exhibition this year. Right. But it's going to uh, be a pro next. It's going to be the Winter Olympics because you've got to do it in uh, just a cap sleeve shirt sure. in winter. Um, yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So you're uh, playing that. She. Uh, <laughs> but whilst I but was she didn't doing appreciate that. that, she used to go, "Ow!" <laughs> <laughs> no, I always think whilst I was doing that, they were like the Charlie's Angels, and they'd be sorting out a mission somewhere because they were really like there was something about them. They yeah. thought, you know, well, yeah, they're special. They were private they were, detectives. What if it were for a man they never see? <laughs> okay, well, the, 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 here's a name I'm interested in because, uh, well, let me just tell you the name first. Uh, Adam Clifton. Hmm. Oh. Go on, what? what are your thoughts on Clifton? Uh, he was one of them kids, he was alright, but he had that thing when, um, if you didn't have enough milk. <laughs> he had, like, uh, wrinkly hands and... <laughs> White, white, ah. white bits in his nails. Oh! Because you yeah. didn't have enough milk. Yeah. yeah. So therefore, <laughs> you didn't like him because you didn't get enough milk. This is not to be confused with the two people with the big heads and the webbed feet, is it? Webbed hands. Well, this was yeah, I that they weren't related. They must have been somewhere along the evolutionary sort of trail, do you know what I mean? They must have come from the same sort of stock. But no, you, you wouldn't have liked him. He's just, he's just one of them people. He was alright, but... Well, I, before people. you say any more, um... On, the, on Friends United, you can leave a little message which explains what you've been doing and uh, what's, what you said, you know, your life's like now. And most people leave maybe two paragraphs. Yeah. Adam, I've printed it off. He seems to have printed, I think it's, there's about six pages here of stuff. He keeps updating it. And he, he just basically lists his memories about everyone, okay, yeah. at the school and uh, what he thinks of everyone. And uh, he says, I often see Simon, da 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 da. He's doing a right for himself, self employed illustrator. Mark Cooper. Carl Pilkington. All right. And your name comes up. Now, I don't know if you've told us this story. I think you may have done, but I can't remember the facts about it. It just says, Carl Pilkington, with his pet bird, was it a magpie? I can't remember. He brought it to school to show everyone, and it flew away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no, they do that, don't they? You show them the love. What, what you, was the story you give, there, them, you give them seed and they just leave. The, what do you mean? Well, this sounds like Kez. Well, that's <laughs> it. I was a big fan of Kez. And, um, <laughs> it was the time our dog had just died. Yeah. So I didn't have any pets, and the cats were always getting run over. <laughs> yeah. And, um, so we didn't want any more pets. Yeah. But there was a magpie that used to fly about on the estate, and I managed to, um, sort of tame it. <laughs> and, um, in the end- With, with became, a chair and a whip? What do you became, mean you tamed it? Well, it just used to sort of hang around it and talk but to it. how did you get hold of it? Did you catch it? Well, eventually, yeah, it used to just come to me, and I, the annoying thing was, 
it got to a point when I wish I hadn't bothered. Because he, <laughs> he used to pop me bike tires. He used to, he used to sit on, on like, if I was talking to my mates and I was on my grifter. I <laughs> just like, he just throws things in. <laughs> it's like an Alan, Alan Bennett play. <laughs> It, it landed on my tyre and he used to peck at the tyre and pop it and then oh, he, used no. to, he used to then never go away so it was always like <laughs> around the house and my dad said never bring it in. So he used to sit on the porch <clears> and <throat> I used to go out and he used to fly down and land on my head oh. and it really hurt. He used to like peck and stuff. <laughs> he thought it was a tyre. <laughs> so it wasn't so much tamed <laughs> as a stalker. <laughs> oh god. So you took it to school and it flew away? Yeah. So did you take it in proudly going look at my mouth? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh but, no. You know, it, it, I think it got a bit confused in the area that it was in because I used to just keep it sort of around our estate but sure. the school was a bit of a distance away. How did you get it so, there? Carrying it on my finger. Did you walk? Yeah. <laughs> wow. So it was happy there and then it got to- But it used to be one of those things that people would stop me in the street and sort of go, oh, what's that? And, and did- I don't suppose you- called it Maggie. You didn't get, uh, Charlie's Angels to go and find out what happened to it? <laughs> investigate? Were they impressed? No, uh, not really. No. But Listen, go on, any- any- like, Carl, let's come know, back to it, mate. Let's come back to it. Let's have uh, a hip hop hooray track. It's the big hip hop selection from Big Steve Merchant. Uh, I don't know what I'm talking about there. <laughs> Just trying to sound hip. This is Spearhead from many years back. Uh, a track again, I think got largely overlooked at the time, but worth hearing again. People in the middle. <sighs> Spearhead, people in the middle. Michael Franti is surely one of the greatest uh, rappers, I think. He just, have you ever, if you've ever heard him bust it live, Rick, he's almost as good as me. I'm just going to tell the, uh, the, uh, the listeners there, Carl, this is quite a little insecure sort of chat, and he was just worried about that last bit. He was going, who would ever find that interesting? He was worried about people finding him boring. And Steve said, as I said, you know, it's, it's like an Alan Bennett thing. He went, yeah, but, you know, no one would care about Alan Bennett if he wasn't such a hit maker. They wouldn't care what he had to say. And we just looked at him for a while and he went, ah, oh, thinking of Tony Bennett. <laughs> Bless him. Listen, it's almost the end of the show, Carl. Oh, yeah. And it's really been a Carl special. I it think, says a Carl special. Yeah. Well, next week, we won't we'll, we'll we'll lay off next, next week. week. We have to We're know. not going to, uh... He wants to retire a little bit, just, uh... One of those old, uh, lottery numbers might come up tonight anyway. Exactly. You might, what are they again? What's the four you've got with? Put them away now. What, come on, well, give us all six. No. Why? Carl, while you're um, rummaging for that... 5, 9, 12 and 26. A few more names that you may recall from Friends Reunited. Go on. Lisa Shufflebotham? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember her? Yeah. She, uh... Was she one of Charlie's Angels? She, no. No, she wasn't that nice, but she wanted me. <laughs> <laughs> her, and, her and her mate Rachel, I remember, I don't know why, but it was some sort of PE lesson where it had to be a bloke and two girls and they were fighting over me. <laughs> and Could you hear what they were saying? They, were just, just... They, they were just like, I want him. And I was loving it. Stuck in the middle and they were fighting over me. And then the next week I thought I'll sit near them. What sort of game do they play at this school? I Amazing. don't know. That's an incredible game. But I think punch they, me on the arm. No, punch me on the arm, they, Carl. They just, they just went through it. Because the following week I thought, right, I'll sit near them again because I quite enjoyed the way they fighted over me. But then they picked somebody else and... I don't know who I was with that week. So d you didn't, uh, didn't get any action with the shuffle both of them or a friend? No. And what? then as she got older, she went a bit off. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't like her. She's probably nice now. It's just, I mean, I'll say about myself, when, when you get to sort of the end of secondary school, you do sort of go a bit odd looking. Right. Do you know what I mean? When your yeah. sort of head grows funny. <laughs> I, I, I would just love to go back to his school of that era. I mean, just what happened to people, whether, you know, all people sprouting limbs and No, do you know what I mean? When, when you're like 12 and that, you, you're quite, no, not 12, when you're 10, when you're 7 to 10, you sort of look healthy, and you look at your pictures, and you go, hey, I was a good looking lad, but then when you get to late mm. secondary school, something happens, yeah. and you just look a bit odd. Okay, well, what about Alison Thorpe? <laughs> not sure about her. I, I sort of know the name, can't put a face to it. Damien C uh, Comer? Again. Know the name. Yeah. Can't remember anything. No. Yeah. It's a shame. Well, these are pretty much all the names I could find. We've had some interesting thoughts, though, and interesting anecdotes. Yeah. Anyone yeah. in particular that you'd like to, uh, to say hello to that, uh, maybe, maybe listening now that no, you... No, I think I would have mentioned Darren Buckley if you hadn't brought him up. Oh, right. He was, he was like my buddy. Yeah. yeah. Did so. you ever see the, um, uh, Magpie game when you took it to the school and confused it? 
No. You're joking. That was the end of it, was it? Yeah. So where did it go? Probably, uh, to some other kid. Cause I mean, oh, I mean actually it probably got killed. Cause <laughs> if, if it was being that friendly with other people, some people might have took advantage of it. <laughs> in what way? <laughs> well, there was a program on the other week about- What, in the way that Shuffle both of them are trying to take advantage of you? Well, <laughs> yeah. There was a program on the other week about bear whisperers. Yeah. And, uh, some blokes got really friendly with a bear, and then the, the, when they were leaving that area where the bear was, they said, oh, we've caused a problem here, because there's some bear hunters coming in and moving into this area, mm. and it's gonna get a bullet if it, if it acts like this, so they had to scare it away, and that's what I should have done with, with Maggie. I should have terrified it a little bit, so <laughs> it wouldn't trust humans. <laughs> Just introduced <laughs> it to some of your schoolmates, I'm sure, would have <laughs> yeah. freaked it right out. Well, the ones with Maybe the that was why it fled. It, it didn't yeah, see- I don't know, it didn't see those two fellas with big heads and webbed hands coming towards it, did it? That would have terrified anything. It's like a scarecrow, like a two walking <laughs> scarecrow. <laughs> Listen, have we got time for a song for the ladies? What's, what's oh. happening? We've, we've not really thought- Quick then, quick, just do it, just do it. Thanks very much. Well, on, no, no, we haven't li li lined anything up, have we? I was gonna play, uh, Mary Lawson and that for you. And then- Is that... this gonna be the final track? Wait, yeah, yeah, it would be, yeah. We've blown it. We've blown it on the Carl special. We have indeed. I'll play it next week. So, Carl there's got an E at history in GCSE. Yeah. Any history teachers, anyone who can help Carl out, I think we should try and register him and take it this June. So, uh- So what's your homework for this listening. week? You've got to read about Che Guevara, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. The revolutionary leader. Yeah. Okay. Do you know anything about him at all? Have you got any basis? I just know that if you want to use his face on your business, it costs a lot of money. <laughs> Do you know, like, if, if McDonald's <laughs> wanted to have him as, like, instead of Ronald McDonald. <laughs> How does he do it? Steve, how does he do it, man? Oh, we, we, listen, just, just play a final record, Carl. Say goodbye and we'll, uh, see you next week. Alright. See you later. Bye. Cheers, mate. Oh, regret. Is it terrible, Pete Yawn, for Nancy, on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me, Steve, Merchant. Hello Carl. there. Pilkington. Steve, you got any other toilet related <laughs> anecdotes? Rick, my life is just full of toilet trauma. Yeah. And I, Carl, you may not realise this, but uh, a while back I used to host, this is bizarre, I used to host a radio show on the BBC World Service, right? Now, you, if you want someone who's, got, who's the voice of integrity, the voice of intelligence, the voice of a nation, you're going to come to me. That's yeah. obvious. And I was broadcasting, so, now they've got listeners of something like 50, 60 million people around the world. It's mental, the listenership of the World Service, and I used to host this show with someone It's a big else. place, Steve. The World? Yeah. You're absolutely right. And uh, anyway, so I had to, I had to be into uh, Bush House where they broadcast from, 10 o'clock every Friday morning to broadcast around the world to 50 million people, right? And one week, uh, I just went to the toilet in my house, right? Everyone had left, I got there a bit late, I just got up a bit late. Already against me, the clock was already against me, had to be there at 10 o'clock, broadcast around the world. And we got two toilets in our house, downstairs one, right? And the door had already been a bit dodgy. It was one of those doors where you had to give it a bit of a kick because you went in. It was getting a bit, it was getting a bit tired. I don't know what, the w wood was expanding or something. You know, I'm in there. And same thing again happens. No toilet paper. I think, oh, God, I'm going to have to somehow kind of make it up. Why don't you check first? I normally do, Rick. I normally do. It's just on a certain occasions when I'm bleary-eyed or something, I just, I forget. Or occasionally I forget. Normally I do check. Right. And um, you've got to bear in mind that it's not like this is happening every week. This is over the course of many years that sure. these incidents have acc accumulated. So um, you've condensed them for, for the purposes reasons. of this anecdote. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And sure. um, great. You're, you're, you're just brilliant to keep the, keeping the pace up of an anecdote there. Rick. You've just drawn in. I don't know where I am now. Anyway, oh, oh, no, I, I know where I'm. I'm trapped in a toilet with no toilet paper. Yeah. That's where I am. And I'm thinking maybe I peel off some of the wallpaper, you know, things like that. But there's nothing I can do. I got go upstairs. Poster. Well, exactly, but I've got to go upstairs and find Toilet a paper, uh, was there any? <laughs> there wasn't. There wasn't? Oh. I've got to go upstairs and maybe find a notepad or something like that. Oh. And uh, so I try the door, right? The door's wedged, and I'm pulling on the door, and I can't get the door open. It's just like it won't come open. And it's already, and I knew it was going to come to this at some point. Like, this is like, the clock's ticking. I'm trying to pull the door open, tries to run my ankles again. And I'm thinking, well, what I could do is I could open the window, I suppose, and like try and climb out, but not really, because I got the trousers on the ankles and that's Or if it was really raining, fun. just stick your ass out, <laughs> two birds with one stone. Sadly, it was a beautiful day, Rick. It's, I call it the World Bee Day. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, so what I'm thinking is, well, wonder, I've got my mobile phone in there, luckily, because it's in my pocket. I'm thinking, well, maybe I could phone, I would seriously- Kleenex. Think, maybe I'll phone <laughs> the fire brigade. By this point, I mean, it just dried. <laughs> <laughs> no, it hadn't, it was- Hold it was, on, was that little puppy not around? Because sometimes you can call that, it's got a little bit wrapped round it. Listen. 
Or just use the puppy issue. itself. There's 50 million people around the world going to yeah. hear my voice in like yeah. 30 minutes. Exactly. And Where's Steve? He's not locked in a toilet again, is he? <laughs> exactly. Oh, no. So, um, so, so I'm thinking about phoning the fire brigade, and I'm thinking, sure. like, if I do that, it's going to, you know, it's going to be the first call that goes straight on the speakerphone. Yeah. For like the entire fire brigade service. Everywhere. With a butch hero carrying you down over his shoulders with your trousers around <laughs> your ankles. <laughs> exactly. Can I just not pull him up? No. You've got to be learned to taught a lesson. Yeah. But I imagine the idea of a phone up and going, uh, hello there, I'm, uh, yeah, a bit of, I'm trapped in a room in my house. Oh yeah, which one is it? Oh, it's I don't need to know. It's quite <laughs> small. <laughs> is it? Yeah. yeah. It's not the toilet, is it? Because we don't want to come and rescue someone who, who's trapped in the toilet. Which no. service do you require? <laughs> Paper. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I, I think I can't find the fire brigade, the clock's ticking. So then I think, I think one of my housemates is still in the house, but still asleep. So I phone the house number, right, phone rings and rings and rings for ages. And eventually, he answers the phone, <laughs> right? Gets out of bed, answers the phone, yeah. Hi, it's Steve. All right, what's wrong? I'm what are you downstairs. Doing? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah. Let's see. Oh, I didn't wait. No, no. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just... In the toilet. I'm just downstairs in the toilet. Oh, yeah, what are you doing? Oh, I'm well, I've finished what I'm... <laughs> Have you got any <laughs> toilet paper? Any bog roll? Yeah. So he had to, um, kind of scrape together a few bits of paper, you know, and sort of tin foil or whatever he could find yeah. in the house. A right? cactus. Come down oh, no. Pass it th underneath the door. Right? And all right, then he, I said, can you move away from the door while I, because I don't want you to hear me as I'm, you know, wiping the... And so you he didn't did say it. that? Yeah, well, I didn't want him to, you know, that's, what, that's what, embarrassing. What, sorry, what, that's you, embarrassing. What were you yeah, wiping yeah. it with? Uh, not, tumbleweed? What do you mean? What no, noise? I know what you mean. Yeah. No, exactly. Right. So, um, so then I say, right, can you smash Why was he hovering? <laughs> Why didn't he want to walk away? <laughs> Will you keep your head, what was it, <laughs> outside with a glass to his ear? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thankfully there was, there was, there was a window in the door, but it was frosted glass. Right. You could just see my, my semi-naked body moving around. And, um, so eventually I said to him, look, listen, I'm gonna need you to sort of kick the door in. He said, well, I don't want to kick the door in, because you're gonna have to pay for it, aren't we? I go, yeah, but I gotta go to the World Service, I gotta, well, yeah. And he was, a lovely man, he's the weakest man you've ever, you've ever come across. It's like you, if there's one person you don't want to have to throw their body weight against the door, it was him. It's like he'll snap before the door will. So he's smashing against this the door. This sounds like a fetish to me, though. He went in there and there you were naked with lots of toilet paper. And you go, oh, you've broken the door down and there I am naked. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Oh, you've rumbled me, Rick. <laughs> I wish I'd not told that embarrassing story on the radio. Like it wasn't embarrassing enough, you've just got to make it slightly more seedy. <laughs> oh, so did he, did, did he get it down? He did it, yeah, and I got to the World Service with like minutes to spare. Oh. And uh, interestingly, I told that story to 50 million people around the you world. Joking. Yeah. Did they understand? I well, think what, so. What, I mean, is that a bit of a problem when you're on the World Service? Like, thinking of things that everyone can understand? Yes. You can't it's a bit like when talking yeah, to you, Carl. Yeah, exactly, Carl. I think you're on thin ice there, worrying about people understanding what you're saying. No, but you can't talk about stuff that's on the telly and that, because some people say, well, we haven't even got a telly here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're listening to XFM 104.9. Play a record. Nirvana, all apologies on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, obviously, with me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, Steve, I met up with. I know it's forbidden, usually. Mm, I don't know why uh, you Let me just expl it. explain to the uh, listener. Um, me and Steve have got a little bit of a pact. We're not allowed to talk to Carl during the week because he comes out with too much dynamite and we want it to be fresh and it's it's just unfair. And if he sees us laughing, he, he clams up a little bit because he, he knows something's wrong with his head. So, um, I was in a pub and, uh, Carl called, he returned a call, I'd called you earlier, and, uh, and I said, oh, I'm just across the road, right, come over. And, uh, he came over and we had a conversation and, uh, I kept saying, no, save it, and I can't remember half the things he was saying, but I do remember one thing he said. He said that the human eye never grows. It's the, he said, he said, unlike your ears and nose that keeps growing all your life, he says the human eye never grows. Now there's a little bit of, he says, now you look at a baby, it's got big eyes. It's got the same size eyes as it will have. When, when, when a baby's never... born, everyone always goes, oh, look at its eyes, don't they? Because that's like the main feature. Yes. They're quite big. They <laughs> well, don't grow, they don't get any smaller, they stay the same size. What, you mean once you become an adult, you've the same size no. eyes? as soon as you come out of the womb, <laughs> your eyes, the size they are as a little baby, 
they stay the same size. Until it's you like die. the sockets. And I said, I pointed out to him, right, you know, I said, if that was true, Steve Merchant, when he was a baby, with these eyes he's got now, would have looked like a hammerhead shark. All right, calm down. <laughs> you don't want to go <laughs> lay into the eyes. Do you know what I mean? Just to prove my point. I didn't uh, laugh. Good. When he said that. Respect. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? Well, my... <laughs> I've got the eyes of the window to the soul. <laughs> and mine are, happen to be enormous plate glass windows. windows. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But, you know, but nevertheless, no, they're so beautiful. Many people find them beautiful. Yeah, they're great, yeah, many people do. Um, yeah. but, uh, Do you know they don't have kneecaps either? My eyes, or? What? Ba babies. <laughs> when, when they're born, they, do, they don't get kneecaps until they're about two. <laughs> they don't get kneecaps? Isn't that true? Yeah. Uh, what well, are you talking about? Come, that's, but it's, isn't it like a, isn't it a little bone in, it's part of the, the Well, no, the, but all the, 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 you've got lots more, lot more bones when you're born than Yeah, you've got 300, 300 when you're born, then 205 when you're an adult. Yeah, they all fuse, don't they? Do they? The head's got to be all soft to come out. Right. Um, as we said earlier, you know. I would know, I'm a shark. <laughs> 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 oh, so God. So what did you say when he said about my eyes being huge? <laughs> okay, get off it. That, that, so that isn't nice, considering yeah. he's not here. Yeah, so that I wait until he's here when I slag him off. Yeah, very well. No, nice one, Carl. You're an honourable man. <laughs> oh, well, there's- I know, you see, the thing is, right, that made me think that it might be a little bit of truth in this. There is, as well, is the, the, the ear thing. <laughs> Have you seen that with old men who have yeah. really long ears? Yeah. And big noses. Yeah. You mean do, that, they, do they eat buns and uh, walk around in the jungle, these, these old men? You mean that the ears and the nose carry on growing? Yeah, yeah they do, that's true. That's true, it's cartilage. Yeah, but not like, it's not like sort of Pinocchio. No, no, after you're dead, you leave a body lying around, he's got a huge elephant really? bug ears. left him long enough. Four foot nose, that's Incredible. what, yeah. Um, that's no, but, but, they see that, it's about the focal, um, uh, length in, in your eye, you see, because it's a, it's like a big lens. So it makes sense that, that they couldn't change that much. Mm. Um, because an owl, do you know why an owl turns its head round? Sort of like 180 degrees. No, because it, can. it can't move its eyes. Because the eyes take up the whole. It's the biggest eye in the animal kingdom. The eyes take up the whole of its skull. Cause really? That, yeah, yeah, and it has to move its. Yeah. Has it got a brain in there as well? It's got a brain in there yeah, above the eye. Yeah. When I say the whole of the skull. Quite. Yeah. There's yeah. also some space for the brain. What I meant is the 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 two diameters of the eye is the is the diameter of the. You've lost the skull. me there on, with diameters. And you didn't like maths, did you? No, don't like maths. Never understood it. Couldn't yeah. get to grips with maths. I don't know about you, Carl. Did you do maths, math. Carl? <laughs> now, how did you do in your exams on the maths? <sighs> did you do that? Well, I bet yours was rather like my theory, which is why you need to figure it all out when you've got a calculator. Exactly. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah. You're and right. I agree. Well, let's play a record, and afterwards I'm going to be testing you on your homework this week, Carl. Mm. Um, could we do uh, White Van Man first? We could do, oh, just to, you know, they've got no, to know what, to what they're dealing with, yeah. Um, Carl's homework was to read all about um, as you know, Shay Guevara. Absolutely. Uh, uh, last week, he did well on Rasputin, didn't he? Did very well on Rasputin. Yeah, uh, and with flying marks there. Uh, so, uh, um, let's, let's have a bit of Wu-Tang, shall we? So let's have White yeah. Van oh. Man. Yeah. White Van Carl. Nice. No. Yeah. Don't erase none of that good shit. Wu-Tang Clown, there, Steve. XFM 104.9, Richard Vays, with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Now, I just, uh, Remind him to someone else, um, Carlson in the week. I know it's forbidden to talk to him, but we're, we're, I'll tell you this. He was talking, he was very excited about the Friends Reunited. He was a bit nervous at first, wasn't he, last week? But he was really getting into it. Um, and, uh, in the pub he was talking to a lot of people. He said, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd never go on a reunion, though. He said, I'd never, never do that. What, a school thought, reunion? Yeah, and he, said, he wouldn't want to see anyone. And I went, well, I, I said, I said, wouldn't you want to see those two lads with the big heads and the webbed hands? Oh, yeah, these were people you went to school with, weren't they? Yeah. Well, I didn't knock about with them. They were in the class. What were they called? Ah, uh, freaks. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Okay. And, uh, he said, no, I wouldn't want to see them. He said, because what could you say? Oh, you haven't changed much. Right. Mm. And he went, he said, and they wouldn't go anyway, would they? I said, why? He went, well, they didn't have any friends. Right. And I said, well, weren't they friends with each other? And he went, no. That would have been too obvious. <laughs> <laughs> like, they passed it and went, no. I know it's tempting, but let's not. Everyone would think that's just what we were going to do. <laughs> yeah, let's yeah. Not do it. <laughs> yeah. So they didn't even hang around with each other. No. See, I must say, in my in my head, I've got something like it's like a some sort of extra thing from Blake Seven that they're like some sort of you know lagoon monster, but they just had slightly oversized heads, did they? See, does your head grow? Your hmm. eyes don't. Does your head? Because maybe they've got to a point now that it's all sort of caught up with each other. <laughs> Well, at the time, the, the eyes were very small and the head was huge. <laughs> uh, just a very big head. And yeah. The, I mean, the fingers aren't going to change, you know, that's not... 
They had Not webbed funny. fingers. It was like the penguin in Batman. <laughs> really? Are you sure? No, honestly. Are you sure they weren't wearing mittens? No, seriously. <laughs> yeah, they were, it wasn't home economics. They weren't getting some out of the oven, a very hot dish, were they? Every time you saw them. <laughs> but why were there two, but they weren't related and they weren't friends? I don't know, I suppose it's like asthma and that, isn't it? Some kids have it. <laughs> and, and it just was a coincidence. Yeah, but asthma's quite a common thing. Webbed hands, Carl. Yeah. I don't know, you don't think of it, do you, when you're a kid? You just sort of... Oh, when, yeah, you, when you first see them... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there goes the frog, man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Carl, look, let's have, uh, let's have a little quick session of White Van Man. For those that don't listen to the show regularly, uh, the sign is, you know, has a section called White Van Man where a member of the public gets asked their opinions on the uh, week's big uh, political and social hot potatoes. Carl, we just thought uh, it would be funny if you answered some of the... Uh, Questions. It's not so much questions. It's just your views, really, on these big these big news stories. Uh, what do you make of Olympic ski hero Alan Baxter testing positive for drugs? What did he do? Well, he won a gold medal in the Olympics, and for he what? he was a ski he was a skier, right. and he won gold medal, and uh, they've just tested him positive for uh, some kind of illegal drug. But what? I mean, if he did, why take drugs to ski? <laughs> Why? Because all you do yeah. is balance. But imagine it'd be amazing if you were stoned, like going down a hill. Yeah, it's not like you have but to. It's not, it's not going to help you. Is no, it? it's, it's just like... gravity that's doing all the work, isn't it? With skiing. Yeah, but it's often to do with your uh, athleticism, isn't it? It's not even like saying, and we've just found out the people on the toboggan were on crack. It's not. It's not going to help them. <laughs> You, yeah, sit, you sit there and you go with the flow yeah. and you try and you hold Could I say, could I say, the, the, the drugs Apparently he was taking, that's his defense probably, the, it, it, it wasn't, it probably wasn't jacking up H or, you know, dropping a few E's or getting stoned. He was probably taking more sort of, uh, you know, performance enhancing drugs as opposed to him just like scoring some shit around the corner but, from someone, getting off his tits and jumping in a toboggan. <laughs> Doesn't mean that, yeah. does it? He wasn't, yeah, he wasn't <laughs> off his nut. Yeah, yeah. Are uh, you, have, you, have, uh, you tested you, you're pissed out of your head. But why doesn't he just say, don't be stupid, why would I do that? It's just not going to help me out. But it is, isn't it? Because, uh, performance enhancing drugs do. Wait a minute, Steve, wait a minute, Carl. Right, look at this way. Okay, look at me, yeah? I've got, have I got his attention? Yeah, the, 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 the lights can, can turn off your ring there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. To do. Okay, right, now, keep concentrating. Right. Some athletes, you're aware they take drugs, that's to build up swimmers muscle. Swimmers and stuff. <laughs> yeah, swimmers. Runners. Example, runners, yeah. No, not only do they help build muscle, right, but they, they can actually, you know, give them a boost performance, right, yeah. sort of like steroids and all, all this sort of stuff, right? So that's the sort of thing we're talking about, okay? Right, so again, he was, he wasn't why on a bomb would that help before... you? What? Why would that help you when you, all you've got to do is balance on skis? <laughs> not uh, when you're at the Olympic level. Yeah. There's a <laughs> lot to do with, you know, your body and no, your legs. No, it's practice, isn't it? It's like, if, you, if, if you've skied for years, then you've got good balance after a bit. Oh, okay. do you know what, Carl? Do you know what? You've made a mockery of drug taking. Well done. Yeah. Right, next one, Steve. I hate this bit. I hate this. Um, I don't know if you saw it. What did you make of Posh Spice's Warts and All documentary? <laughs> yeah, I saw a bit of it. What did you make of it? Um, I mean, people are slagging him off, aren't they? Saying, you know, she's daft and that, but... Daft, <laughs> mate, you! She's... Uh, <laughs> I, I think they're all right, honestly. Yeah, You know, all right. she's all right. I mean, I think David's really a decent bloke. Sure. Um... Would you agree that he's quite a simple man? Yeah, but he's a footballer, he doesn't need to be, do you know what I mean? It's like me. Yeah. Like, you know, alright, I only got an E in history. <laughs> but knowing about the Tudors doesn't help me press these buttons and put the next CD on. No, sure. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, good luck to him, and he's done well out of it, and it's just yeah. jealousy. Yeah. I remember, though, um, when, I when I was back in Manchester, I was in Piccadilly train station, and he was there, right? Not as big a star as he is now, yeah. back then, but he was stood there, and I, I was so close to going over to him and saying, did you go to my school? Because I recognised his face, oh, but I no. didn't know who he was. Do you know when you <laughs> sort of go, sure I went to school, it's not the one with the big head. Yeah. But I do recognise him, then my girlfriend got off the train, and I said, I'm sure I know him. She said, yeah, it's David Beckham. And I was oh, so close to Oh, thank God for your over. girlfriend. Does she, does she get an awful lot of scrapes, does she? <laughs> she does, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, what no. about the fact that uh, the pension crisis sure. is going to force Britons to work into their 70s, Carl? You might have to carry on working into your 70s before you can claim a pension. I think it's a good thing. Um, because you see a lot of old people who look bored. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I honestly think if you, you keep, do. if you keep your brain busy, yeah. you'll live longer. Yeah. It's only when you actually shut down, right, that that's when your body sort of dies because it, it doesn't feel it has a purpose. Yeah. It's like if you've got flu, mm. keep going to work. If you have a day off, you just feel worse, you'll mope about at home, doesn't do you any good What about, wh where do you draw the line then? What if you, say, lose a finger? Pop into work? Um, depends. 
if if you can't concentrate because it's painful. But right. what if you're a typist? <laughs> you're not going to type as many words, but you, you'll do more at mm. work than you would having a day off at home. Sure. Okay. Um, Tony Blair turning trendy with his uh, Paul Smith designed naked lady shirt. I don't know if you've seen this. It's the one mm. with the uh, pictures of naked ladies on the cuffs. And, you know, I mean... Okay. Um, and finally... Uh, that, you see, this is what annoys me about this feature. It's just, what's that? So what? Yeah, but it's the, pres it's the Prime Minister of this country wearing a trendy shirt with naked ladies on the cuffs. All right. <laughs> Okay, and uh, finally, what do you make of the fact that Top of the Pops have banned uh, Will Young singing both tracks uh, on the number one slot, and uh, consequently he wasn't on there at all, they had to show the video. It's the first time anyone's ever made this demand. He wants to sing both the A and uh, B side. Well, he can't. It's, it's double A, yeah. Double A, a side. That's well, what he wanted to. That is how it works, is it? Yeah, I agree, yeah. And the thing is, which one... I mean, at the end of the day, loads of people have bought it, haven't they? And it's yes, like one of yes. the best... So it doesn't really matter what it is, because people have got it, they can listen to what song they want at home. It doesn't matter about what Top of the Pops do. Yes. And... It's just annoyed me now. I d it's Who's annoyed you? Th this, th just what goes on in the world. I'll tell you, you're better off not knowing. <laughs> I, I, it's better being in my little world. If that's what people are talking about on the streets and asking the white van man, do you know what I mean? You're I think right. you're right, Carl. I think you're Jeez. right. Should I, should I play a lovely song for you? Because you're getting all stressed now, aren't you? I've not had a good day. No, I know. We tell you about it. Later. It's not a good day. Well, I'm going to play um, uh, a, a Neil Young track here of Harvest. It's uh, Alabama. It's, it's, it's beautiful. And this is for Carl. Athlete, West Side. I still like that one. It's a good track. Yeah, good I was track. worried that it was a bit novelty and it would go off very quickly. But it's good. No, really it's, it's not bad at all. On right. XFM 104.9, I'm Richard Bays with me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, Steve. <laughs> well, we were talking about the news just now, and uh, there was a story I heard in the week, I think it was on the radio, and I don't know all the details, but what I heard was that a number of, I think it was Falkland, uh, maybe Gulf War, war veterans, were, I think, suing or complaining to the government because they wanted compensation for post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but it seems to me that if you're in the army and you're a soldier... A certain degree of trauma is kind of inevitable. I mean, after all, if you're any good at your job, you are going to see people getting killed. So I don't understand what the internet are. I don't <laughs> know why. No, if I only came back and Tony Blair met him and go, all right, well, not really, no. Go on, what's the matter? Well, if you, there was people shooting at us and everything that was all muddy, well, calm down, don't cry. Well, I will. There you was a drill sergeant just kept shouting, saying, look at you, stupid boy, where's this well, gun's not clean? I just cleaned the gun and it was fine, and now he's telling me to clean it again. Yeah, and the boots, uh, they were, they were oh, shiny. Well, he's got to do that, it's more His different. neck was as big as his head. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but you don't know what they, you know. I don't know what the ins and outs of it are, but, um. Uh, is it, what you got to do is make sure you know what you're going into, that's what I do, you got to check the small print. So if I was, you know, going over to, like, the Falklands or, you know, the Gulf, I'd put my hand up and go, will, uh, will it be horrible? And you at the back, yes? Will it be horrible? <laughs> it, it will be horrible, yeah. yes. It will be horrible. There will be shooting and lots of death and everything like that. I go, right, I'm not going to go. And they go, <laughs> exactly. okay then. Okay. That should be fine, yeah. should be fine, yeah. Just like that. It, does anyone else scared about this? Uh, pretty much all of us. Okay then, well, we won't send anyone <laughs> yeah, then. Exactly. My, um, brother, my brother went into the army, right, because um, he couldn't get a normal job. And my dad said, you know, if you don't get a job by such a date, that's it, son, you're going in the army. And, um, oh. so when, when was the Falklands? Was it about eight, 81. Right? And he joined back in like 81 or something. And uh, he, 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 I don't know, he was in Aldershot or something. Oh, yeah. And uh, he wrote back to me mum saying, uh, you know, a bad time to join, bad time in this. So she wrote. <laughs> what bad time to join? That's so sweet, Carl, isn't it? That's all like, dear dad. Yeah, well done. Um, <laughs> don't know if you've noticed. Yeah. Uh, I was on the doll, that, that's for sure. Uh, thank you for joining, uh, a month before the Belgrano. Anyway. Uh, go on. My mum called up, spoke to the sh sergeant, and said, can you leave him out of this one? Can you leave him out of this one? What, he, the Falkland War? He's only just joined and she called him Chuck, which he got done for. Like, she, she's one of them, it's, I think it's a northern thing, like, saying, how are you, Chuck? Yeah. And she called the sergeant Chuck, and he, he, he the sergeant said to my, my brother, uh, your mum, you know, she's called up and asked if you can not go, which, uh, of course, you know, I mean, it, it, we'll see how it goes. But can what? You tell what do you mean? Why did the sergeant even entertain this? Well, 
Pilkington, come here. Your mum's been giving me a bit of earache. Now listen, tell her I've told you, but can you call her, because she was really, she called me Chuck and everything. Can you call her and say you don't mind? Well, not really. Oh, please, because I've promised her, uh, say you want to go. No, please, say you want to go. Why was he entertaining this phone call? Probably because he was new. What? Because he was new to the army, I suppose. Who? No, yeah, I mean the sergeant. Right. Uh, I don't know, maybe so, they do that. So what happened? Did he didn't go in the end? So he didn't go, no. You can't do it! But you that's ludicrous! I love it, I love it now. Oh, we're going over the top. Built no, in. I've, I've got a note. Yeah. Is this, is this really your mum? Yeah. Okay, no, this seems to be in you order. No, you, because I notice it says, um, uh, I do not want to go into the army, I don't want to go and fight, and it's crossed out and it's good, my mum says don't yeah. go. Yeah. No, you didn't write this yourself. No, no, my mum wrote this. Okay, you definitely wrote this yourself. You're, you're gonna have to do um, fill envelopes. No, I'm, I'm sure if, if he was needed he would have had to go, but I think they made a bit of a special effort, they sort of said, oh. Well, it wasn't conscription anyway. Oh, no, obviously But were the, the other soldiers going around just going, wah! <laughs> Wilkington! <laughs> no, he ended up being a mechanic in there, and he got kicked out for, um, going for a packet of fags in a tank. <laughs> What? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do you mean he nipped down the shops yeah. in a tank? Yeah. I don't okay. believe that, Carl. You've Honest made that Honest to up. God. That, and he went off with the sergeant's wife. So that didn't help, and he ended up getting kicked out. Sorry, your, your brother's a genius. I love this. I love this. Well, first of all, um, he gets a call from his mum, going and let him up, and he goes, oh, God. Then he goes, uh, uh, where is, where's Pilkington? His mum's on the phone. He's, where is he? Um, he's near your house, Sarge. Near my house? Well, why is... No, no reason. Uh, well, when he comes back, when he's finished, tell him his mum called. And can he get me a packet of hands? <laughs> tell him to walk this time. Wow. This is ludicrous. The, so the sergeant phoned out that he was sleeping yeah, I, with his wife? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I did, was Did your mum phone out and say, let him off? <laughs> <laughs> no, let him off this time. Can he... T yeah, yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. But he misses it. I mean, I haven't seen him for about 11 years. But ever since he came out, he's just kept getting into trouble and that. And the army, you know, people slag it off. But I think if you're a certain type of person, it's good, it's good for it you. It didn't straight him either. How could it? No. He was going down the shops in a tank. He was shagging someone no, behind but their he back. Was, he's yeah. really weird. It's like back then, he was like a proper adult. And he had a house and he collected crystal with his wife and that. <laughs> and now, he hasn't got any of that. Has he got the wife? No. Has he got the crystal? Don't think he has. And he oh, I'm seriously, I haven't seen him for about 11 or 12 years. Oh, so I it it always start, uh, Carl's stories always start off nice and funny, and then they just leave me empty and slightly yeah. depressed. I don't know whether to hug him or shoot him, put him <laughs> out of his misery. Can we take Carl to the... Uh, phone in if you think I should take Carl to the vet and have him put down. Because it's just too stressful. <laughs> <laughs> Main Offender, XFM 104.9. Well, it's that time in the show where I test Carl on his, uh... Homework. Yeah, for the week. History. The re-education of Carl Pilkington. As you know, we found out last week that he'd uh, taken one GCSE and he'd got an E and it was history. Do you know, Steve, I haven't told you this, went shopping on Sunday to buy some new jeans. It's in a shop. Saw an old lad who I haven't seen for about two and a half years. Went, you alright mate, how are you doing? First thing you said, sorry to hear about your exam results. Oh, <laughs> God. I Had just, he listened to the show or someone yeah, had just told yeah, him? Yeah, he was on a train listening to it on the way to a football match or something. He knew that you were on the show, did he? He was already yeah. listening. First thing he said, wow. sorry, sorry about your exam results. Haven't people have been coming up to you in the station going, you alright, yeah, do you want to talk about it or? God. I know. Well, well you did take it pretty badly. For a 29 year old man. Just a bit of a shock because it annoyed me that. I it wasn't a shock. You no, knew you, you hadn't got any. No, I thought I'd have got a bit more than that. I wasn't expecting, you know. But you weren't, you didn't even think you took history, so that must have been a bonus. Yeah, that's what my girlfriend said. Yeah. So, well, but didn't she say something quite philosophical, which was like, you know, you didn't even have any this morning? Yeah, she said yesterday, you know, you, you didn't have anything <laughs> yeah. Yeah. today. Exactly. Which was good. Yeah. Mm. But anyway. Anyway, okay then, well, you were tested on, uh, Che Guevara. Right, Carl. We should just, hang on, we should just remind people what happened, because last This is a little series, I've got lots of these little books, right, they're about, like, um, two and a half inches long by about, you know, two inches wide, those tiny little things you see in the, sort of, on the front counter of Waterstones or Smiths, and it's, uh, The Life and Times, a series of all the great, all the greats in history. Uh, last week you read about Rasputin, he wasn't impressed. No. Uh, this, this week- This book's a little bit thicker than the Rasputin one. No, it's the same, I think, was it? 
Maybe the writing's so you're smaller. Figure writing or something. Um, but, okay, Shark Che Guevara. Who was Che Guevara? Just, just, uh, now, you learnt to pronounce it, right? And how do you remember? You told me the week how you remembered to, to what his name was. Che is like Shake, and his, his surname is like Guitar. Right. Shavara. Okay. Um, but anyway. <laughs> right. Um. Tell us what you know and I'll, I'll, we'll ask. Right, first of all, um, his, his name isn't really Shay. Right. It was something else and Shay means buddy okay. in, uh, wherever he's, from, uh, Argentina. Mm -hmm. okay. Right? Yeah. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Right, so anyway, he was born and he was, uh, by the way, Carl's not reading this from a book now. This is all out of his own head. This is just... not pre-planned notes. No, this is, this is, I mean, it's I know it real. sounds written, but he's just yeah. ripping right, on this. here we go, here we go. Go on. Um, he was born, um, he, he had bad asthma as a kid. Right. Which I thought was quite interesting because they didn't have cars and that back then, and that's what they're blaming asthma on these days. The bad, the bad build-up of traffic and that. Well, they so, did have cars, Carl. Not as many as they have now. Okay. Um, so that was, that was something I picked up early yeah. in yeah. the story. Uh, he had asthma, yeah. His dad, his dad was into poli- he wasn't a politician or anything, but he was, you know, they were into the politics. Sure. So he sort of grew up around a family who was into, you know, watching the news and that and keeping up to date on yeah. what's going on yeah. in the world. So that sort of rubbed off on him. He went to school, he was doing stuff on medicine. Yeah. Yeah, he wanted to be a doctor, or he thought he did. Yeah. Um, anyway, he, he learned really quick. He did like, uh, six months work in about three months. So he could have some time off school or something. Right. So he, he took that time off yeah. and went to travel South America with his mate okay. on a motorbike. Yeah. Yeah. And he uh, he saw all this bad going on in the world. And he thought, oh, this, this is bad. This. Yeah. You know, I, I could so, do something here. I could yeah. change this, make it a nicer place to live. So he um, he said, what I'm going to do is uh, join a gang right. that sort of uh, is against the, uh, like the like the government. Yeah. Right. Right. I'm all right so far. Yeah. You're doing very well. Right. And and the woman who he met, who was like running this gang, is a woman called Ilda, who he later married. All right. And Ilda introduced him to Castro. Right. Who was like the, the like the head cheese of the gang. Right. Who wanted to change things. Okay. And um, so uh, she said like this is this is uh, I think his real name was Eng Engelbert or something like that. Ernesto. What? Ernesto. Ernesto. She said, this is Ernesto. He does medicine. Should have him in our, in our sort of army. Yeah. So when there's injuries and that, he can, he can make people better. Yeah. So he said, yeah, all right then. So he joined the gang and they went like, uh, went, went to sort of, I'm chopping it down a bit. This no, 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 sure, sure, sure. You're, 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 you know, you're condensing it's this. Not, thing, it's not, it's not in real time. No. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, so they go. It feels the, like it. <laughs> So this is why I just wanted to ask you to ask me questions. Well, listen, let me cut to the, let's cut to the chase then. So, okay. um, obviously well, he made his name as part of the, uh, Cuban Revolution. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you know what date that was? About, uh, no, I don't. Okay. And, uh, obviously, so, uh, he, he was, he, he had a big involvement in that. Yeah. Um, well, what, where, 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 which country was he, um, was he caught? He was caught in Bolivia. Yeah. Uh, how did he die? They executed him. Yeah. He shot him, and his last words before he died, right, the, the guys there with the gun, huh. and he, he wasn't scared, he didn't, he wasn't like crying or anything, he said to the bloke with the gun, he said, go on, shoot me, uh, be a man, yeah, he said, yeah. and they shot him. And yeah. did, did it tell you what happened to him after that, his dead body? No, but Suzanne was telling me about this the other night, she said there's more to it than that, they stuck it in a... In a in a glass coffin, didn't yeah, they? So, well, yeah. well, no, but before that, they cut off his hands and his oh, feet, feet and sent them to. Uh, no, 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 and that, because they and they buried them in different places, and then they buried the body. I think they might have sent the hands to chat, to uh, Fidel, but uh, they they buried him in an unmarked grave because they didn't want anyone to um, start using his his grave or his tomb as a place martyrdom. of martyrdom. But of course, that just made him even more of a martyr because no one knew where he was buried, so it just meant that he was yeah, even more of a martyr. Yeah, but that would work anyway because if they did find out, that's more places people can go and sort of grieve. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If Genius. you've got all these different graves... What, with different parts of his body? Well, you've got a foot over there and it's like, well, you know, oh God. His head over there. Thanks for sure. what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, so, so all in all, all so in all, essentially, what's your summary of Che? <laughs> yeah, uh, you like him more than Rasputin, don't you? A lot better bloke than Rasputin. I can understand why he, he gets one of those little books. Um, well worth knowing about and, um, good bloke. Did a lot, you know. Crammed a lot into his short life. Yeah. But, um... 
Yeah, interesting bloke. But I'm um, just just on the subject of uh, Che Guevara. Um, Steve called me up in the week because he was going through the the duty log. We love the complaints on the BBC duty log, and someone had written in because one of the Blue Peter presenters was wearing a Che Guevara t-shirt, and what did the bloke say? Yeah, this is a, a series of, people can phone in and, and write and uh, complain to the BBC about different things. Why would you complain about wearing something Well, listen, no, this it? was the thing, is you can phone in, but the best one, I mean, there's been some amazing complaints Oh, there's there. some great ones. The, really? the best one, my favourite, my favourite one that wasn't a complaint but was actually just someone had to phone in was, what an excellent edition of Kilroy this morning. <laughs> yeah, Which but there's lots of that. It's things like, Esther was superb. Yeah. Woman call yeah. one. Woman call. Uh, there yeah. was a brilliant one I remember once, which was um, uh, Robbie Williams was wearing a Nike T-shirt on top of the pops last night. Product placement on the BBC. It's just all so things like that. It. Yeah. But anyway, this was this was one phone call. There was a, a presenter on Blue Peter. She was wearing a T-shirt with Che Guevara's face on it. Right. And um, someone had written in and said, uh, or someone had phoned in and said, very worried to see uh, a presenter wearing uh, Che Guevara's face on a T-shirt. Are you trying to turn my children into communist revolutionaries? Yeah. Imagine that. Imagine who's thinking that, who's bothering to phone up with that information, Carl. Yeah. Who knows what they're going to say about this show? <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're you've been championing the work of uh, Communist Revolution. Luckily, luckily, no one listening to this show can either write or operate a phone. <laughs> so I think we're pretty safe. So, so thumbs up, Che Guevara. Yeah. Well done to Carl there. Yeah, no, I uh, thought he was he I brilliant. Right, I but the thing yeah, is, that, you, that, you keep saying to us, you don't understand why history is interesting, and yet you're clearly interested by that. You, you remembered that Carl. information. Do you, I've got another. Yeah. I've got. I've got a few in the series. Can I, can I give you your next week's homework? Go on. There you go. Oh. Read it out. Hitler. <laughs> Hitler. The life and times of Hitler. 1889 to 1945. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know much about him? What was what, the significance of that last date? Why did he? What was what, that last date, Carl? Why do you think he died in 1945? End of the war. Yeah. Which I'm interested in. So this, yeah. this will have stuff about Anderson Shelters and that. <laughs> it might, it might not be covered in the Hitler um, biography, the Anderson Shelter, but just I mean, check if there is a special Anderson uh, <laughs> chapter, Anderson <laughs> Shelter chapter. Yeah. Yeah, I'll look forward to this. Yeah, one. It'll be, yeah. It'll be interesting. Uh, powdered egg is page four. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Well, right. we're going to play a hip hop. Yeah, we're it's time for a hip hop hooray. Um, people are absolutely in love with this feature, Rick, as you well know, and I know you're somewhat jealous of it. Yeah. Uh, this week, I know that Outcast are currently on the playlist, aren't they, with their new single, Whole of the World? Is that yep. what? The Whole World? Anyway, this is a track uh, from the big compilation, Outcast. Uh, it's just a sort of compilation of all their greatest hits. And uh, this is a good one. It's called Rosa Parks. Play it, Carl. <laughs> their greatest hits album uh, that's outcast and a track called rosa park like it like it yeah enjoy yeah it. now we just had a call uh from someone uh, impressed by carl and carl's very pleased because this guy has actually done a phd on Che guevara so in theory whatever subject he chose in theory he's probably one of the experts in the world on this particular field now hello are you there yeah i'm here hello what's your name my name's david david now, you, now where did you do your phd did at ucl so the UCL, mild, mild college. And what was the actual title of the PhD? It was uh, Che Guevara's influence on class struggle in uh, Europe in the 60s. And what did you think of Carl's performance? In I this, thought he this... did really, really well. The only thing I'd never heard those last words before. So, so Carl <laughs> actually knows something you don't know. Yeah, possibly. Although you <laughs> presumably not take that as verified information. You'd probably, you probably wouldn't take everything Carl said uh, as gospel. You'd probably look it up yourself, would you? I probably would have a look, yeah. Did, did you know about Baby's Eyes? Sorry? Did you know that baby's eyes don't grow? I didn't know that. You see, that's why you shouldn't take yeah. things Carl says as, uh, as gospel. Because it, it come out with something, you know, m you know vaguely uh, intelligent and then say, did you know about baby's eyes don't grow? Um, any, uh, any questions that you'd want to test Carl on? Any uh, thoughts, any things he missed there on the uh, history of Che Guevara? I think he did really well and uh, I, 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 think, I think he should be congratulated. What's it? No, because Carl has problems with understanding why people are interested in history. And well, even though he's been reading these books, he keeps saying, why does anyone care about history? Why is it important? What would you say to uh, Carl? I think he should maybe then look at w who Che Guevara did influence and why he still influences people today. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, well, he knows that he influenced um, Citizen Smith, uh, and he knows that if McDonald's ever wanted to swap uh, Ronald McDonald for Che Guevara, it would cost him an awful lot of money. <laughs> so he is trying to p apply it to the modern world. He's, he is having a go. Well, maybe you should think, like, why Rage Against the Scene have him on, on their T-shirts. Good point, mm -hmm. Carl. Why do you think of that? Why do you think they have him on the T-shirts, Carl? I, thought, I don't know, maybe that's... 
that was a designer of the t-shirt. Maybe they wanted another t-shirt. Maybe they wanted Ronald McDonald. <laughs> but didn't have any in. Sure. And they said, oh, we'll have that one there then. <laughs> well, thanks very much, um, Dave. Just uh, before you go, do, do you think car would be an interesting subject for a PhD? Yeah, very much so, yeah. Okay, well, yeah. um, well, if, if you know, if you know. Well, hopefully one day you'll become a professor and you can maybe set that as some, uh, coursework. I do, yeah. Carl Pilkington. Imagine that. Cheers, Dave. Imagine having an MA in Carl Pilkington. <laughs> thanks very much, Dave. Okay, bye. Cheers, bye. That's right. good. My teachers never did that. What encouraged you in that never, way? Never said well done. So really? Yeah. But you never showed up. Yeah, they, they, no, you have to be in the same room. They were really. too busy saying, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but me, Mrs. Matthews, me, me head teacher. Oh, sure. let's not lay into Matthews again. Oh, not, not, not Matty Matthews. Says, not not Grimble Matty Matthews. I'd never be a high flyer. D d if she could see you now. That, what did she say? She, you'll never be a high she, flyer? She said that to me, mum and dad. On, really? On a parents' evening. <laughs> What and that was after I'd played the drums in Little Donkey. <laughs> <laughs> she clearly didn't know what she was talking about. Pinch of salt. REM with Orange Clash on XFM 104.9. Well, I'm nearly through, only 20 minutes to go. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve and Carl. Carl, what did you point? What did you point to me then? Just then, reminded me. Go on. O Orange Crush. Do you know we were talking the other night about contraceptives? Uh, no, no, you said to me, uh, I've got to do lots of own work, you look up how they used, in the olden days, how they used to use elephant dung as a contraceptive. <laughs> and I went, what? And he went, no, look up, you make me give me those things. I said, I don't know, was it they put, when you're running around with dung on the end of your knob, no woman really wants to go near it, is that how it worked? And he went, come on, you give me things to do. If you've just written a PhD on how to use elephant dung as a contraceptive, please get in touch. And I'll give the number in a minute. It's not elephant, it was crocodile. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why? But, um, yeah, orange Sorry, crush. you can't, no, no, whoa, 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 whoa. What? Back. Ow. What do you mean? It was crocodile dung. What, how did they use crocodile dung as a contraceptive? I don't know. Right, go on, Orange Crush, yeah. So Orange Crush, um, what it was, I, I was trying to look up that, that thing about, um, crocodile stuff, mm. using it, and, um, I came up with another one saying that they used to use a lemon, sort of shaped, right, and the, um, put it, put it on, and the citric, so the um, citric acid, citric acid in it kill the would kill the sperm. Right. So they would. Sorry, they would wear the lemon on the end of the knob. Was that erotic? Right? <laughs> it worked. At least not try anything, Carl. Mate, that <laughs> yeah, works. Yeah, yeah. If the ladies like that, I mean, does it? Could it be anything? Could it be like uh, you know a melon? Kumquat. Yeah, maybe. In my but in my case, what's <laughs> those hairy ones? Yeah. Anyway, that uh, just reminded me when orange orange crush. Well, thanks very much for that, Carl. It's a uh, and that, I didn't even ask him to. No, 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 no. That. no. So Orange Crush reminded you of the lemon contraceptive. Mm. Okay. Jolly good. Jolly you could good. use it as a little lemon squeezer, couldn't you? It could be like a novelty lemon squeezer. You just stand in the kitchen, <laughs> and then when someone wants to just come along and go yeah. <laughs> on the end of your. Did yeah. you make this uh, lemonade yourself? Uh, yes, I, I did. It tastes funny. <laughs> it tastes funny. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Anyway. Do, you, do you? Would you? Carl, this is a quick question to you. Would you ever sort of find yourself in a situation where you might confuse a woman's breasts with mountains? Is that a concern for you, do you think? No. Not, not a problem for you? Well, not if they're, not if they're small and humble, I wouldn't. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. That's what, fingers crossed. If they were small <laughs> and humble, then I'd, I'd pretty much not confuse them with mountains. Thank God, but I mean, if they were large and, and sort of pendulous. And with, like, like, quite rocky with snow on top. Exactly. Then I'd go, hold on, love. Wait a minute. Hold on, love. I was into this, but now... Exactly. It, it, I feel like I'm alone. Carl, do you know what we're talking about? Who's, who has, who has done that? I'll Who's give you a clue. What? One more time. See, my breasts are small and humble, so you don't confuse them with mountains. Shakira. It's a lyric that taking the nation by storm. It's quite a nice song. It's got. It's very much like. It sounds a bit like Men at Work, don't it? Yeah, it's got the pan pipes. Is this what's its kid? Who? Um, Julio Inglesius. No, it's Shakira. Consequently, the word Shakira there being mentioned. I haven't heard of him. Okay. She's a big Latin star, apparently, big Latin American star. Uh. And, uh, anyway, just sing it again for us. See, my breasts are small and humble, so you don't confuse them with mountains. <laughs> Which is a concern, it was always a concern. <laughs> Definitely. And she, I said, the number of times she's woken up, and there's been a fat bloke with a beard and a little, a little Sherpa, she goes, what are you doing? And they go, we're just, 
trying oh. to climb this map. Look again. Oh, sorry, love. Oh, it's your tits. I didn't realise. Oh, tits. We thought we were in. I can't hey, believe too. it. I can't walk on me camping. You can't camp on my tits for the night. No. Well, why are you claiming them? Well, I just Because they confused. were there. Well, they're small and humble. What are you mental? <laughs> <laughs> Carl. I love that look of Carl. Carl is looking back and forth. You know when, it, when you sort of, uh, uh, you go t -t -t to a cat and it looks back and forth between two people? That's very much like Carl's looking at us now. Or when, like, a child sees a midget or something in the street. <laughs> They're just transfixed, aren't they? And the parents oh, just don't stare. When we were pushing um, Ash, just the our producers uh, in a wheelchair, and we were pushing he's through the midget. We should make no, he's not a little midget. He's not tall. But um, we were pushing him through the VC, and this little kid just came up and just stood in front of him and looked at him. Yeah. <laughs> they just laughed. It was funny. <laughs> do you do that? I imagine that you get caught staring at him. Yeah, do you go out to people? Do you go out to people with problems and go, "Mummy, is that a monster?" Well, I was telling you one about when I used to go with my dad in the taxi. Oh, yeah. Well, what's this story? Well, um... Your father was a taxi driver? He dad used... Well, he had loads of jobs. Mm. Which he did back then. They don't do that anymore, do they, people? Don't... They don't... <laughs> have do loads of, of stuff. Sure. But, um, it, one, at one point, he had a black cab and I, I used to, uh... Used to go with him. He used to get, a, like, a, a beer crate and put it in the front of the black cab. Yeah. And sort of sit just next to the meter. Yeah. And, um... <laughs> Anyway, we got this call, and, uh, like, the guy on the end of the radio said, oh, you've, you've got, uh, you've got your son with you, haven't you? So he said, yeah. He said, oh, it's just like, you know, we've got a pick-up at, uh, number 11 Village Lane or whatever. And he said, oh, all right. And it was this woman. It was like a woman version of the Elephant Man. Wow. The Elephant Woman? Yeah, it looked like... <laughs> it, it, uh, it, it, like it was uh, really strange, because I was in the front of the cab, and, um, when you're a kid, you, if you, if something locks on, you, you're a bit scared of it, aren't you? Yeah. And my dad was like, look, be all right. And we're, we're driving towards just her. Look, oh, don't worry, son, I've got loads of buns. And just to I think I'll just th throw one down the street if it's it, you know, right after you're it. You're being mean, right? How I old am a little bit, yeah. How old were you, 18? No, I was, I was about 12 or sure. something like that. 11, 12. Hmm. And as we got closer to her, it looked like she, she, she was holding, like, a bag of spuds on her shoulder. For a snack. <laughs> right. <laughs> And her head was all a bit mangled and messy and that. And uh, my dad says, my dad said, whatever you do, don't stare at her face. Yeah. And she got in the back. Because you turn into stone. Well, <laughs> she got in the back, and I, I had like the mirror, the, dri the driver's mirror thing, yeah. and sort of having a, having a look, trying to work out. And I really, I mean, he said, don't stare at her face. I couldn't work out where her face was. <laughs> it was that. It was that weird. <laughs> oh God. So I'm not sure you're from. Manchester. I think you're from like Narnia or something. <laughs> yeah, you or, got frog or, boys walking yeah, around the Lord like, of the Rings. They've they got like the claws of a lobster and the and the head of a toad. Yeah, and you got women getting in with spuds for heads. I mean, what what this sort is not of what is this, this is not place? The place you grew up. This yeah, is mad. Oh, you can't believe it in London, can you? You come down and go, look, symmetry. It must be amazing. It must be a, a, a thing to do with upbringing, though, mustn't it? And because again, do you know I've said to you before? Years ago, when I was a kid and didn't have any worries, good-looking lad, mm. you go through it a bit, have a few more worries, and you look knackered. <laughs> now, back there, there's a lot more worries and stuff, so you get a lot more freaks. Whereas in London, everyone's like happy, aren't they? Got I love the money. fact that stress can cause your <laughs> fingers to fuse and your heads yeah. to grow. No, but if, if she like... must have been really stressed to have a head like <laughs> yeah, a yeah. She what, was pretty, yeah, was she an accountant or something? Mm. <laughs> wow. You know what I mean. But what, but what does she do? What does she say? Where was she, she going, in? by she the way? She couldn't speak. London <laughs> Zoo, please. <laughs> I think she, <laughs> she was- she was going to like to a the fair. shop. <laughs> Seriously, honest to God. On my mum's life, she was. Because at the end of the day, that's a good thing with animals, they don't judge you, do they? She's not she an animal. animal. She's a human being. She's not actually an elephant. No, but she- You know the elephant man was not actually an elephant. <laughs> you understand that? He's got no elephant genes in him at all. No. That was just a cruel name people gave him. Yeah. No, it's the name of the disease, isn't it? Elephantitis. <laughs> That's, look, so listen, so this woman, why was she going to a pet shop? <laughs> she was going to a pet shop? Who wants to find her husband? Is, it, <laughs> <laughs> is, this, is this true? No, it is true, yeah. Oh, I'm, God. I'm not, I'm not taking the mickey, because it must be so, really bad for you. Of course you. it is. Carl, 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 I'm going on to you today about cutting myself shaving. Yeah. What's going on about that? To think that she, I mean, she's probably not alive now, but to <laughs> think... But, but you're saying, you're going to say this is a worse problem than a little cut shaving, aren't you? Yeah. 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I the think you're right. Carl, there's, there's a couple of key questions I need to ask. One, if she couldn't talk, yeah. how did she tell your dr father where to drive it? Did she ever get on the nose? Did she point with her nose? <laughs> yeah. Right, this has got silly. Pick your song. But oh, and also, <laughs> finally, where did you say she lived again? It was like in a village. A little small village. Right. Um, just and heading out of the way. All I'm saying is we could maybe get like some sort of coach, book some coaches, get a coach party out there to have a look at her. <laughs> and, and, uh, uh, and now <laughs> you can make some lemonade. The offspring of a woman and some spuds. Yeah. <laughs> Please <laughs> enter at your peril. Should it give me a shiny shilling? Wow. Oh, that's terrible. Well, I'm going to play um, a little bit of Teenage Fan Club song for uh, the lovers here. We left it very late, which we've been just uh, you know rapping with uh, Carl P here, and this is I Need Direction. Teenage Fan Club. Oh, they're a good band. They aren't are they? a good band. XFM 104.9. Um, so, well, we're, we're nearly there. So, will your girlfriend be proud of you now? You performed a PhD graduate it's there. It's a bit annoying because she's not in London today. She's in Sunderland or something, or Newcastle. Right. Working. So, she won't know what the your greatest triumph. She, she saw last week's and you got an E in history, and now this week you, cu you come through yeah. with some great praise that Miss, Mrs. Matthews never you know, laid upon Even you, did she? Oh. No, just said you won't be a high flyer. Eh? You've shown them, haven't you? You never know. I mean, I had mates who, um, mm -hmm. like, you know, my mate, Colin Makin, who sure. did the disco with me. Pilkins making music, yeah. Pilkins making music. Yeah. He was dead brainy. I don't, I don't think he's up to much these days. Sure. Just, you just, can't plan it. Yeah. Just goes yeah. to show. Well, I mean, you can do a certain amount of planning. You can do. I mean, driving a tank down to the shops with some fags <laughs> yeah. never going to mean you're a high flyer. You and know? that 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 woman uh, who you picked up in your black cab, she's in a circus now, and yeah, she can happy. fly, which is good. Am I confusing that with a film? You went to see a film this week, didn't you? Mm. What, what did you see? see? Um, the um, Monsters Inc. Oh did yeah. You have a little argument. What was the argument about? Did you have an argument with your girlfriend or something? Because about well, the history thing took over last weekend. To be honest, when you found out my results. <laughs> that was like the talking topic of most of the weekend. And <laughs> why? What did she say? You, know, you brought it on yourself, you know, why didn't you take it serious, you know? Was she annoyed or upset? Well, she just sort of said, you can learn, look, you, you learned Rasputin. Mm. You know, if only you did You've that You've done school. that. You've done Rasputin. You know I mean? She said, you can do it, if, if you're told to. She said, you know, it's only because Ricky's told you to read the book that you're reading it. Mm. Does she think we're sort of like taskmasters? Does she think we bully well, you? Nah, she knows it's just a laugh. Yeah. What did you did you tell your uh, parents about your? No, nope. no, never. Because they they never even questioned where my results were, so I don't want to tell them that you know I didn't get any. No. What? How did they do at school? I didn't have them back then, did they? Right. Uh, <laughs> when was that, Carl? The middle, middle ages. ages. I don't know. I mean, like I say, back then it wasn't about getting results and that was it. It was just about learning trades. Mm. I mean, my dad, right? He can like put windows in his house. Yeah. Do plumbing. He should. It's dark, isn't it? <laughs> he's done that first of all. Right, so, so he can do what? He's got a multitude of different yeah, jobs? Yeah, he can do all sorts, do you know what I mean? Mm. If there's a problem in my flat, I can call him up and say, you know, this isn't working, what should I do? Mm. And he'll say, like... Is that not a brain surgeon? He'll yeah. say, will fix it. Sure. Uh, so what about Monsters, Inc? What yeah. did you make of it? Um, it's alright. It, it is a kid's film. It, it sort of annoyed Is it? <laughs> okay. I was having, like... <laughs> what, what gave that away? <laughs> Was it the songs? Was it the animation? <laughs> yeah, the fluffy it, little yeah. things that squiggled round on the screen for yeah. an hour and a half. It is annoying because, like, there's kids everywhere and kids don't watch films, do they? No. Do you know what I mean? They're messing around. I don't know why they make kids' films. And you can't, to be honest, it's mental. You can't concentrate properly when mm. you've got kids, you know, Screaming making chain. noise around you and that. Yeah. So I'd say, my little review, wait until it comes out on DVD. Okay. <laughs> Great review that would <laughs> be. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> Film 2002. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan Ross going. Well, I don't want to give it away. <laughs> it comes out on DVD. Yeah. Oh. No, but not giving it away. It's just that you can't watch it properly when there's kids screaming around you. Yeah. Sure. Do you know what I mean? What are you looking forward to this week? You going to go and see anything? Just been talking to Ricky now because my missus is away. I'll probably uh, get out a DVD tonight. Yep. Rounders. Oh right, okay. I thought you might like that. And if you can get, so, I mean, if I can get you tickets, say in the stores or in a box for the stage version of Midnight Express, would you be up for that? <laughs> it's on, it's on ice. I think it's the final year, it's, isn't it's it? It's lovely. It's Midnight Express on ice. Yeah, and it's a musical as well. 
They're on roller skates. Do you have any dope under your jacket? No. Yeah. It's well it's, it's, it's great. John yeah. Hurt is actually in this version as well, yeah. which is fantastic. He played the Elephant Man. So it's all comes, the universe all comes together. Have you ever seen the stage version of the Elephant Man? No. You'd love that? Yeah. Who's in that? I have seen a clip of it. Who plays him? Uh, I, I, I think they got a real guy with actual, with Elephant Titus. Right. Yeah. What are you finishing on? Uh, let's uh, have a final song for the ladies. It's from uh, the album Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me by The Cure, and it's the beautiful catch. Goodbye. See you next week, See you next week everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>